Tim Root, Wednesday, the 15th, 2021, a.k.a. National Signing Day for college football. And as my good friend Corey said when I walked in, no shortage of storylines today and throughout this week. I feel like I haven't gotten sleep all week, but that's okay because that means content, and content means business, and business means money. So appreciate you all tuning in again. Very, very excited to chat with you all, taking your questions, comments, calls. Also, probably going to be using this conversation for the podcast. So we're going to be hearing the sound of my voice. Welcome to episode 559 as well. We're going to go ahead and just use this combo. I'm going to talk about everything I'm going to talk about on the podcast tonight anyways. With signing class, Gamecocks, uh, I think officially signing what? 21 prospects today. I don't know if they signed all 21, but either way, uh, signing the class right now. Sitting 24th in the total team rankings on 24-7 sports. 21st on rivals. And I don't know what on ESPN because nobody really follows ESPN. But either way, we're taking your questions, your comments, your calls. And of course, like I said, if you're tuned in digitally on the podcast, appreciate you guys tuning in as always. Um, yeah, really excited. You guys have never been to a 10 roof show. Be sure to come on out. We're out here in the Vista, $3 drafts. I think 50 cent wings are dead. I'm going to go ahead and assume that. Yeah, 50 cent wings are dead. There's a wing shortage in Cola. <laughs> Blame Omicron. Omicron got a hold of the wing or whatever the freaking variant thing's called. Uh, they do have $7 pitchers, though, which we discovered last week, which is incredible. I, I don't know how it took me. We've literally, literally been coming here since July, and I didn't know they had pitchers at all. So that's on me. I, I'm a slap dick for that. So either way. Uh, again, really excited to talk recruiting, taking your questions, comments, calls. I already see the, the, the questions rolling in regarding Jay Sean Barham, and I certainly want to get to that and get my overall thoughts and feelings. And I've got another text coming in about today's recruiting class or just a recru recruiting class as a whole. Uh, also, we need to touch on Spencer Radner, Austin Stogner, which is not fact in the recruiting rankings. Uh, the Gamecocks got a lot better as a football team on Monday night when they picked up one of the most highly sought-after players, certainly that was going to come through the transfer portal, and that is Oklahoma transfer quarterback Spencer Rattler, effectively picking up a five-star quarterback, and immediately Spencer Rattler becomes already the best quarterback prospect to ever step foot on campus in Columbia, South Carolina. So, again, you wanted him, you got him. Rattler on campus along with his buddy Stog at the tight end. Uh, also, big news today in the transfer portal as Gamecocks quarterback Jason Brown announces he will be hitting the portal Pursuing other uh, opportunities will not play in the bowl game. So will it be Seb Nolan? Will it be Colton Gothier? We can talk about that. Also, J.J. Nibari announcing he is declaring for the 2022 NFL Draft. Which no surprise there at all. I mean, you fully expected that the guys were changing the first rounder. Uh, Kevion Mullins in the transfer portals. Like Quandre White earlier this week announcing he's going to the draft. So, I mean, it's just all kinds of stuff. I feel like it's happened this week. It feels like it's crazy. I woke up today and I was like, it's Wednesday. How is it not already Friday? It's, it, the amount of news we've had, the amount of content, which, again, is great, though, uh, for what we do. It's incredible. But, again, we'd love to hear from you guys. Like I said, if you're tuned in on the podcast, which will be dropping on Thursday, guys, appreciate you all tuning in. And also, we are going to have a fantastic conversation uh, with Kawan Lewis on that show. I believe Kawan Lewis. I, I, let me double-check here. Yeah, Kawan Lewis. I, don't know, I haven't really decided yet. But, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a conversation with Colin Lewis. Either way, appreciate you all tuning in. Man, like I said, a lot to get into with this class. Currently sitting 24th. Let's see. 24th on 24-7 sports and 21st in the rivals. Yeah, Colin Lewis is our conversation. I just want to make sure I had that right for those who are tuned in on the podcast. But, yeah, yeah great conversation with Colin Lewis. But taking your questions, your comments, your calls, and talking about the Gamecocks class. So without further ado, let's go ahead and run through the class, by the way. The players in the good league. Actually, right now, you sit 23rd on 24-7. So I don't know what happened. You just jumped on the spot. Also ranked 11th in the SEC. Uh, you run down this list of commitments, and I'll talk about the decommitment at the end of this, because, again, he was at the top of this. He was actually the highest-rated commitment of the and signee. It would have been of the Shane Gamer era, but, of course, he decommits flips and signs to Maryland on Wednesday morning. But you run down this list, you got safety Keenan Nelson Jr. out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, which is a really, really good pickup. I think people forgot about this kid because he committed all the way back in the summer. Really, really good prospect. I think he'll play immediately for you in the secondary. Then you got quarterback Braden Davis out of Delaware, really highly talented player, four-star, four-star linebacker. Stone Blanton out of Mississippi, who is a hard hitter, gonna play for Mark Kingston as well, with a hard hit in the middle. Um, Definitely think he's going to help you out defensively immediately as well. 
Then you got three-star safety Anthony Rose out of Miami, Florida. Three-star safety Henry Floyd out of Powder Springs, Georgia. Three-star wide receiver Landon Sampson out of Texas. Three-star linebacker out of Westmoreland out of Georgia, which the game actually actually got a flip from him. He was committed to UGA. Uh, they got him to flip, I, I forget, it was a couple months ago, but either way, three-star linebacker uh, down at Westmore out of Georgia. Three-star safety, Peyton Williams out of Texas. Peyton, shout out to Peyton. Uh, P-E-Y, though, not P-A-Y. Uh, three-star offensive lineman, Ryan Brubaker. This kid is all Gamecock. So you see him on social media, absolutely loves USC. I think he would have signed immediately if, if, he, if he could have. Uh, four-star what? Used to, Used to be a four-star, got bumped to a three, the cop drop, whatever. Okay. Right. Uh, three-star safety, Guan Banks out of Tallahassee. Three-star defensive lineman, Felix Hickson out of Jackson, Georgia. Three-star safety, Nick Emanwari out of Irmo High School in Columbia. Three-star offensive lineman, Grayson Maines out of Spawnee, Georgia. Three-star edge, uh, Byron Tom or Brian, excuse me, Brian Thomas Jr. out of Winter Garden, Florida. Three-star offensive lineman, Jason Henry out of Marietta. Three-star defensive lineman, Demetrius Watson out of North Charleston. Three-star defensive lineman, DeAndre Martin out of Virginia. And then finally, three-star wide receiver, Xavier Short out of Chapin. Shout out to Chapin. Uh, you got three guys who I don't think have signed yet. I know one of them, DeQuandre Smith, an athlete out of Columbia at Spring Valley, uh, three-star kid. He will sign in February. I heard he's got a blue shirt, so he's actually going to count in 2023. Then you got a three-star wide receiver, Kyla Horton. And three-star defensive lineman, Jamal Weiss, out of Miami, Florida. Now, of course, that did not include, I did not mention at the bottom, you got your two big, big, big pickups right on the transfer portal with your quarterback, QB1, Spencer Rattler, and your tight end, Austin Stoddard. Now, again, the guy I did not mention at the top of that list, Jayshon Barham. And what a situation that is. What a situation that is, uh, or was, if you will. So I'm a big don't tweet at recruits guy, and I still stand by that, don't tweet at recruits. But man, RIP, RIP Barham's bar mentions. RIP is mentions. In case you missed what happened, folks, Shane, you were going into detail. Uh, of course, it was a big pickup, a big deal over the weekend. Uh, getting this kid a four-star linebacker out of Baltimore, Maryland, it was the highest rated commitment to date of the Shane where Aaron certainly would have been the highest rated signee. The morning of signing day, he flips from Maryland and signs with the Terrapins. And I actually got on social media because I woke up very early on Wednesday, obviously, and, and I, I was I was shocked. I thought it was a joke. I thought Maryland had messed up and they had already put together the tweet. And I was like, they don't realize like he committed to us, whatever. They had this tweet on like auto set to auto go. And sure enough, no. It turned out that Jay Sean Barham had actually switched his commitment and signed with Maryland. Now Shane Beamer, this is where it gets interesting. Shane were saying that on Saturday, after he committed, and we saw all the crystal balls, right? The crystal ball boys came out and predicted he would go to Maryland after we felt pretty good, folks felt pretty good that Barham would go to South Carolina. He ends up, or yes, he did, the crystal balls come into Maryland. He still ends up choosing South Carolina. So we're thinking to ourselves, okay, okay. So people got some bad information. Well, first Shane Beamer. Coach Beamer got a call about 10 minutes after Jay Sean Barham had committed to USC from someone close to the situation in Maryland saying, hey, man, just so you know, him committing to you guys, it's all part of the plan. He is going to flip on Wednesday morning. It gets even crazier because Tuesday night, the night before signing day, Beamer also mentioned that Jay Sean Barham and his mother called and expressed how happy they were to be signing with South Carolina and how they had finally found a home, blah, 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 just went on and on and on about USC. And then sure enough, Wednesday morning, the news drops. Um, guys, I don't know. I just think what you're, seeing, what you're seeing is the shitty side of recruiting. And listen, everybody's entitled to their own decisions and where they want to go. And, I, and I'm not going to lose sleep really over the, where a 17, 18-year-old kid wants to go play his college football, but I will say there is a way to do things and there's a way to operate and a way to treat people. And karma's a bitch. I don't know. Karma will play out. And you know, I'm not wishing you a will look at it all. Absolutely not. But that's just that's a that's a shitty way of going about it. So either way, whatever, all we got is all we need. And I'll be honest with you, looking at it from a glass half full, looking at it in a positive for South Carolina, thank God the kid didn't come. 
Thank God he didn't because if his, if his background and everything else is that wishy-washy, if, it's, if that is the moral compass and the character of the kid, you know, I mean, most likely he would have gotten on campus and after spring ball went to the transfer portal anyways. So what difference would it have made? Um, I'm not sure what difference it would have made. All right, we've already got a call here. I think this is our guy, John Kruger, if I recognize the number correctly. So we're going to go ahead and jump to the phone here. John from Rock Hill. Yeah. John from Rock Hill. You're probably going to be calling the Shane Beamer's calling show here shortly, I bet. But, uh, hey, fire away with your question, John, and we'll take it off the air, my friend. Go ahead. said that on purpose. I think, hey, we've got openings. We, we can add guys. You know, guys are going to hit the transfer portal. Are any others, are any others going to hit the transfer portal? I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe so. Maybe so. And I will tell you this, though. That, that's another thing I, I've, I've been seeing with, and here's the thing. Do I wish Jason Brown was playing in the bowl game? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I, I wish he was playing. Do, do do I think he should? Maybe. I mean, whatever. You know, do I wish J.J. Barry was playing in the bowl game? Yes. Yes, I do. Quan White? Yeah. But I'm not going to knock a kid for when coaches are up and doing it every single day, leaving for better situations, leaving for better paychecks. I'm, I'm not going to knock a kid for if he feels like he's better, got a better opportunity somewhere else. You know, that's his decision, and you know, it is what it is. So uh, there's just no point in dwelling on it. And you know, now you either turn to Seth Nolan or Colton Gothier to be your starting quarterback in the bowl game against UNC. But again, we can get to that more in a second. Again, I want to talk about the recruiting class. Like I said, you know, you take a look at this class. Like I said, the guy that jumps out to me, I'm excited for Keenan Nelson Jr. I just thought like he was sort of forgotten because he, he committed so long ago and there was no drama around him. But again, coming out of St. Joe's Prep School in Philly, six foot one, 200, a four star kid, like I said, um, ranked the 19th best safety in the country. So very, very excited for him. I think he's an immediate impact player in the secondary for you. And I think Beamer, you heard him talk about it too when he talked about the secondary. And, Talk about the defensive backs they sign. You know, where do you see these guys? Where are you projecting them? They can play anywhere, right? corner, safety, whatever it is. And you want guys that can 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 help you in many different ways. Stone Blanton obviously is another huge, huge pickup for you in the middle. Um, Four-star linebacker. I mean, this dude's already six foot two, two twenty as a senior in high school. Already built. I mean, you look at him. Pretty much already filled out. He's only going to get bigger, stronger, faster. So really excited about what he can give you. Um, and again, I'd love to hear you guys' feedback too when you talk about your 
favorite player from the class, most impressive player from the class, sleeper of the class. Uh, you know, I think Ryan Brubaker could be an immediate impact player for you on the offensive line. Six foot six, two eighty, already has that size. Nicky Mimore, 6'3", 208, his measurables. Uh, really, really excited there as well. I mean, again, there's a lot of good players in this class. But again, you look at the class. Ranked 23rd right now on 24-7. 21st, I believe, on Rivals. I believe 21st. Let me pull it up here. 21st on Rivals, I believe. Let's see. Yes, 21st on Rivals. As I've said before, and I'll say it again, because I see many fans complaining and coming to me, Chris, we finished 11th in the SEC, which is crazy that you can be ranked, what's going on, man, 23rd nationally. I'm assuming you're, you're willing to talk about Jay Sean Morgan. This bullshit. Right. right. So everybody wants to talk about Jay Sean Morgan. And I was just talking about it. You just missed it. So we'll, we'll, we'll go back over. This is going to be, yeah, this is going to be the podcast tomorrow. I told everyone this was yeah. Everything. We're, NIL deals is going to ruin everything. I said it from the beginning. Look what it's done. It's ruined everything. I, I don't think this is NIL. I, I don't think this is NIL. I, I don't think so. I think this was a. I think this was a setup from the jump, I guess. Because if you. Did you hear what Beamer said about it? Did you hear what Beamer said about it? No. Okay, well, then that's going to clarify some things for you. So, anyways, Shane Beamer was asked about Jay Sean Barham and the situation. And I don't know if it, if it was because he legally can't. It was if it was because he legally can't, or he just didn't want to. He did not name Barham by name in his answer. I'll give you his full answer though, verbatim. This is, and I quote, when asked about Jay Sean Barham and the situation and what happened. Quote: You have to ask the young man that you're referring to. I can't say it's a surprise. When this particular young man committed on Saturday, about 10 minutes later, I got a phone call from somebody in the know up there that said, hey, just so you know, it's all part of the plan. He's going to flip Wednesday and go to Maryland. Why? So I can't sit here and tell you that I was shocked, but when you're on the phone with a young man as late as 10, 30, 11 o'clock last night, speaking on Tuesday night, and he and the mom are telling you how they're so thankful they found a home, how appreciative they are, how we do things, how they know that South Carolina was the place for him on his very first visit to South Carolina, and how excited they are for the future, you feel pretty, pretty good about things. Certainly with the young man you're referring to, some strange things happen overnight, which that's a story for another day. Again, we got the right people here in this program who signed today. Guys you can win with, and you win with people, and we certainly got the right guys here today. That's for sure. That sounds like a Peyton Dawkins, like, for bad first date story, like leaving the girl on and can't get a text back. And, I was about to say, I, 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 it's tough. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Anyways, there you go. So that, there's a lot of shadiness. I think a lot of it was wasn't Maryland's coaching staff saying, "Hey, commit to South Carolina, flip to us, so we look better." Like we're the split school, and <laughs> we we pulled a player away from a, an SEC school. I mean, you're, you're not, huh? I, I saw that. I didn't see that. By the way, Jamie got a haircut for those who were wondering. Uh, those who didn't digitally, yeah, Jamie got a haircut. What, what's what's the point of doing that? Um, the point of doing that is because you're petty. I mean, I, what, what else do you want? I don't, I don't know. I mean, uh, the, the, why, why do people do a lot of things? You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I don't know. I can't speak for why they would do something, something like that. I don't know. My buddy told me that the one we offered the running back at Virginia Tech. Ramon, running back at Bob Tech. Ramon, whatever, and Davis. Ramon, Davis. Ramon, he he went to Maryland, too. Brown yeah. Diggins, Maryland. Yeah, Ramon, Ramon Brown Diggins. Brown, 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 Brown. If that's not the biggest NIL deal I've ever seen. No, no, there's a, there's a Gamecocks Maryland rivalry brewing. Bro, seriously, I love us and Stanford so bad. So much. They lose to us. I don't know. They well, said he's here's a bunch of money. Uh, anyway, so, no, I, listen, I get it, man. I, I get the frustration of RM, but I, I, whatever, man. All we got is all we need. What else are you really going to say? You know, I, I'm not going to, again, as I said before, and I guess I said it right before you got here, I'm not going to let the decision of a 17 year old kid ruin my night and you know I'm gonna lose sleep over it but yeah shitty it's really shitty and I'll tell you this man looking at it from the positive we dodged a bullet we dodged a bullet we don't want anyone as Brad Lowing would tell you you know we dodged a bullet man we we dodged a bullet Maryland can have that headache they can deal with that problem again it's not like the kids a five star quarterback he's a freaking linebacker man I'm sorry linebackers don't score touchdowns so it's like Antonio Williams all right here we go we're gonna jump to the phone lines we do have a call 
Zachary, fire away with it. We'll take the question off the air, my guy. Zachary with it. Thank you, Zachary. Bringing the passion, bringing the heat. I did not know, like, I mean, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm irritated by it. I did not know people would be this fired up about it. I mean, but you know what? I, hey, listen, I told Corey before we even started, I said, I said, you do not screw over the Gamecock fan base and live to tell the tale very often. Thank God Jay Sean Barham isn't like a local prospect and was coming here tonight. Oh, he, no, he, we wouldn't get in. He wouldn't get in. Bottom line, you wouldn't get it. The reason why, That's it. The reason why is you love Jamie so much. Now, I, I mean, I get it. Trust me. I, I mean, I, I, I just couldn't believe what people. I was like, I can't believe that. That's so shady, man. Like, it's the fact that people <coughs> be lying straight to your face. It's just shame. You don't want to folks do be lying straight to your face. Yeah, it's just shame. I mean, like I said, ask all the girls in Peyton like they keep lying straight to their face. Hey, hey, tell them one thing, and hey, tell them one thing, and hey, means something completely different. Yeah. Men lie, women lie, recruits lie, numbers even lie. Every, just everybody. Don't believe anyone. Don't believe anyone. Uh, anyways, guys, 843-790-3377. Again, like I said, if you're tuning in the podcast, appreciate you. This is going to be the – this is going to be – Rocket Main comment is that dude in the crowd is pissed off. Yeah, he is. He is. Somebody also said they couldn't understand what John was saying. So. Uh, yeah, Pam has the number one class. No kidding. Adam Ritter. We, we all know Panic Ritter. Ritter. Panic Ritter says, F that Maryland player. I hope he doesn't go to the NFL. <laughs> oh, man. People are on one. Let's see. Yeah, and I, I hear you. I hear you. Let, let's focus. How about Spencer Rattler, my guy? Let's focus on the bother. We got our quarterback. Gamecocks got their quarterback. Spencer Rattler officially. Dude, I had. I had like 50 texts. Even old J-Mo was hitting me up in the group chat. Hey, J-Mo couldn't believe it. Yeah, he, he's like, we got Rattler. Hell yeah, we were fired up. I think social media was on fire Monday night. My mother doesn't care about football. Your mom texted you about Rattler. Yeah, she doesn't care. I don't do it. I saw, I saw stock in his first. And then yeah, I saw yeah. Rattler's for 37 seconds from the I had chills for the next like 10 minutes. Yeah, I mean, old Peyton and I went out and got uh, and uh, yeah. Good luck, Takarias, and got home. And, hey, like I was I was with Peyton when I posted the little Rattler yeah, video. Yeah. So. Hey, you're not looking good. Uh, let's see. This guy wants me to read this. I don't know how to say his username. But he says, I'd love to be able to chat on Facebook, but they banned me for 30 days for bullying a Clemson slap dick. Uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. <laughs> Our fans are on one. Signing day. Again, top 25 class. I, I, I'll tell you this, too. I, I know you the game cops drop. I know you lose bar, but realistically, looking at it, man, I, I, I came into, and I, I said this over the summer, as long as we have a top 25 class, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. And you have Rattler and Stock, which are not included. So, I'd say you won. I, we could get another transfer. It's not over and, yeah, and it's it's not over yet. Hey, if you can develop a walk on into a draft pick, you can develop yeah. that. Listen, exactly. And, and look, here's the thing. I, I challenge you to go back and look back at the recruiting classes under Steve Spurrier and what they were ranked. Because we were not pulling in top ten class. Hey. We had a seventh ranked class in two thousand seven. The, the class, here's the funny thing, the class that Marcus Lattimore was a part of was ranked 25th. It was ranked 25th. I mean, we had classes between 20 and 25. Again, one of my favorite movies, Moneyball. We are card counters at the blackjack table. Until we start winning 10 games consistently here, we're not going to get five-star or five-star or five-star. We're just not going to do it. We're not going to do it. So it's like it's the chicken or the egg conversation. What comes first? You get all the five stars and you start winning big and winning a lot of games, or you start winning a lot of games and you start getting all the great players. Outside of that top three, the SEC rankings are injected. Yeah. I mean, and that's that's what, you know, I understand why the rankings exist. And I'm not telling you the rankings don't matter, the stars don't matter. 
But when we're talking about like the difference between South Carolina being the 24th ranked class or 23rd ranked class and the 19th ranked class where LSU is, is like 0.12. LSU is lower than us right now. Are they lower? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Well, it's just, it, it's splitting hairs. How much better is the 20th class and the 25th class? I mean, is it that much better? We were both playing kids with Ole Miss. Yeah. So let me just tell you this. We're, we're pulling in top 25 classes. We're pulling in top 25 classes. Hey, we're a top 25. I can live with that. I can live with that. Hey, South Carolina's not a top 10 program right now. Not even close. So South Carolina's not going to be pulling in top 10 classes. But you know what you did do? You know what you did do? You might have the 23rd ranked class, but you've got a quarterback that goes to a top three or four program, top five program, a top five. He does not go to a South Carolina. You have a great opportunity right now. And speaking on the the, the, the Rattler and the Stogner stuff, we'll talk about the OU transfer. You have a great opportunity with Spencer Rattler. You can parlay the Spencer Rattler signing. Nice haircut. Hey, it's funny. Hey, I, I don't know. I, it, it, I don't, you, you look like a mole rat now. I look like a human being. You made more I could have given you the number for my guy right there in five. I almost got a bullet for you. No, I, I I like it. I like it. It is. I just what what did he have before again? Was it long? What was it? It was long. It was it was three count long. Okay, okay, that's right. I, I kind of forgot what it was. I I'm just used to seeing Jimmy with the hat so much. Uh, Blake, the, this guy says, "How many five dollar bills is Jmo taking out of his grandma's purse today?" I don't know. <laughs> He said, "How many how many five dollar bills was JMO taking out of his grandma's purse today?" I stopped stealing from my grandma. Yeah. Anyways, though, the Gamecocks have a great opportunity. Speaking on Spencer Rattler, and to parlay parlay that success of bringing Spencer Rattler on. Here's how: I went on everybody's favorite radio show today, Mark Ryan, just our favorite radio host. And no, listen, I like Mark, I, but I know the Gamecock Nation is, is not very fond of him. But anyways, I went on his show, and he asked me point blank, what is success for Spencer Rattler in South Carolina? How do you define it? And I mean, okay, so it's, it's tough for me to, to pinpoint right now, at least. Right, We still got a bowl game. Like, to look ahead to 2022 already, pinpoint wins. I said, you know, three to one touchdown interception ratio. What? It's hard to put a number on it statistically. But for me... Success for Spencer Rattler. It will spell success for our team. It will spell success for his statistics, record-wise, everything. Spencer Rattler getting drafted. I know that might just sound like, oh, that's just so basic. We have not had a draft, a quarterback drafted at the University of South Carolina since 1989. Didn't Connor Shaw get drafted? No, he signed as a free agent. Don't test my knowledge of this. I did my research. 1989. Not even Anthony Wright signed as a free agent. No, no, uh, uh, no, no, no. Garcia went to the Canadian League. That was not drafted. To the NFL. Drafted to the NFL. It was Todd Ellis in 1989. That was the last quarterback that was drafted. It's a quarterback centered. The, 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 the game of football, you got to have a quarterback. You don't have a quarterback, you don't have a chance. It's a quarterback driven game. You have to have that guy. You don't win games 20 to 17 anymore. You got to score points. You got to have a quarterback to score points. That's a given. All I'm saying is, you can parlay this Spencer Rattler thing in a future success. You get him drafted, you get into the league. All of a sudden, other five star quarterbacks or at least very highly touted quarterbacks are like, okay, I can go to South Carolina. Accomplish everything I want to, win a championship, get to the league, get a great education. There's a lot of beautiful women in Columbia, a lot of great places to go out. Great, 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 great facilities, great fan base, right? Great bartenders, cheap drinks, great lobby, great podcasts, great media people, right? Great merch, everything. And rather than even visit. None of that. He got none of that. He was, he was, Boy, is he in for a treat. He was is he in for a treat? I just asked about Gus Chandler. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm saying you can parlay that, though, because if you don't think having Spencer Rattler here is going to help get more prospects and other players, you're out of your mind. Receivers are going to see that, Tight, especially offensive guys. They're going to see that. They're going to see that and say, hey, why not South Carolina? I can go play at South Carolina. I can go play with a big time guy like Spencer Rattler. He's going to get drafted. I'm going to get drafted. He's going to get me the ball. Or he might just be here for one year. 
That's fine. I only need him here for one year. I don't need him here for more than one. That's fine. I only need him here for one. I only need him here for one. Hey, good. He, he should be here for one. If he's here for more than one, we screwed up. He's an NFL guy. He better not be here for more than one year. What if he really likes you? Well, I mean, that's different. You know, whatever. What if he meets his wife and, you know, just wants to be here forever? Big Columbia. He becomes a big Columbia guy. Could do it. Zeb Nolan 2.0. I don't know if Zeb Nolan's a big Columbia guy. Probably not after he's running. He just wants to play the party. He's starting. Anyways, um, I don't know where I was going. Either way, I'm just saying you can parlay that into future successes, I think, getting other big time and getting big, other big time players as well. Stoddard's a big time player. Hey, parlay and success don't belong in the same place. Parlay and success. In this, in this scenario, this is a successful parlay. This is a successful parlay. All my gambling folks are cringing hearing the word parlay. It's like, no. Big parlay guy. Oh, so you like losing money. Good to know. <laughs> Serial parlay guy. Just got a text here. Hope you and everyone in the live chat are having a week. Your friend, Robbie Davis, a.k.a. Kirk Herbstreit. Hey, uh, Robbie, Peyton says he loves you. Just so you know. Uh, let's see. And this guy's username, by the way, is Blaine Old Beats. Blaine Old Beats. I think his name might be Blaine. I don't know. That's a terrible Twitch name. I mean, maybe it's a good Twitch name, but bad than anything else. Blaine Old Beats. Right. He says, Spencer has three years of eligibility left. What do you think will need to happen to him personally to decide to stay for a second year? Again, I think it's bad. If he, right, and I don't want that to happen. If he balls out and does what he's supposed to do, he's going to be a he, he's going to be a, a I don't know if he'll be a first rounder out of Carolina, but he's going to be a draft guy. Like bottom line. So, yeah. Do you think this four star coming in from Delaware? Brayden Davis. Davis, the four star from Delaware. Yes. Yeah. Is he the next Connor Shaw? Is he the next Connor Shaw? Let's. How about this? Let's try to make. Let's try. Let's try to stop make making anyone the next Connor Shaw. Yeah, you're right. Can he be a week in, week out, QB one successful lead us to a lot of wins, more wins than losses? He's got the build, he's got the skill set, and that's another thing. Maybe he can be groomed now under a Spencer Rattler. Because again, the best thing that can happen is he redshirts. I mean, after, too often we've seen guys thrust into action before they were ready. Right. 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 So I, I don't want to see Braden Davis right. yeah, playing exactly. in the tournament. I don't want to see Braden Davis take the Luke Doty path. Which that's another very interesting storyline of what happens when Doby knows um, going into next season. But I, I don't want I don't want to I don't want to have to have that happen. I mean, ideally, ideally, you 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 have a system in place where you bring a guy in, he starts for you know, or, or let me put it this way: you 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 start out with a guy who's a junior or something, junior senior starts for two years. Next guy comes in, he's a redshirt sophomore. Then he starts for three or four years. Then the next guy, you, and if you have these veteran experienced guys instead of throwing these freshmen in the flames when they're not ready, when they're not ready, you can stun a kid's growth. You can stun a kid's growth by throwing them to the wolves too quick. You just crush their confidence. If any sport, too, Peyton knows, kids go out there as a freshman pitcher, they get rocked, they're never the same again because they weren't ready. They weren't ready for it. <laughs> Then they quit, they go to CIU, they blow their arm out, and they're sitting at Tin Roof eating the, which not Tindies. The elephant there worked. The elephant there worked. Hey, you cannot elephant there somebody. You cannot elephant there them and not do it. True. Uh, Tony Sharp tuning in on YouTube from Gilbert. Appreciate you, Tony. Again, guys, we're talking National Signing Day. I don't think we're going to have a break today because Shane Beaver's got a call in show at 7. And yeah, he's at Backstreet tonight, 7 to 8. I'm not going to go. But I am going to have it on my laptop and watch it here for those who want to huddle around and we can have some brews and listen to what – I mean, I'm sure Beaver's going to say a lot of exactly what he said again. I'll be very interested to hear if he expands on the Barham thing again. So, I, I don't – if you're calling in, you should do that. You should call hey, in. Hey, but I'm going to huddle around regardless of You want to do what? I'm going to huddle around regardless of the That's fine. Yeah. Huddle around. Cool. Cool. This is a call-in show. No. <laughs> Anyways, where's my Todd Ellis? Where's my producer to help me? That's the question. Where's the soundboard? Yeah. 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 He's over there. Yeah. 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 Phil. Phil's a legend. Phil's a legend. Hey, Phil, do you realize what's up? 
So again, guys, Gamecocks sitting at 23rd nationally in the 24-7 rankings. You look at rivals, they sit at 21st in those rankings. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the class. When you look, the, the, the signing class is very heavy defensively. I mean, you look, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six of your top eight guys, yeah, six of your top eight guys are defensive players. You sign six defensive backs, which I don't think is a surprise because even though the defensive backs overachieved this year, I mean, that's that's an area of, of you know, lack of depth. You just don't have depth, for sure. Jalen Foster's now gone. Uh, who else is leaving? Jalen Foster's gone, and R.J. Roderick is gone. Dickerson, from what I'm hearing, I don't want to spoil any news. I hope I'm not. Will be back. When I'm hearing, you will be back. And a lot of guys do have decisions to make what they're going to do. Uh, but I'm hearing Dickerson will be back. Of course, J.J. Barre is going to be. You need to reload defensively. I think the Gamecocks are going to hammer the portal for offensive guys. I, I do think that's how they're going to attack it. Um, so we'll see how Shane will approach it. You did get some good offensive players. You did get some good offensive players. Like I said, Braden Davis for the future. Uh, you like him. I think Landon Sampson, I think, is going to be a big-time player for him. I do think Landon Sampson, uh, six foot one. 180 pounds out of South Lake, Texas. He was actually Quinn Ewers' number one target, which I mean, that says it all right there. Uh, big time player there. I, I think he will be a good player. I think he will fight for playing time immediately in a wide receiver room that desperately needs playmakers. And then you look at who's the other receiver we got? See you, man. <laughs> Xavier Short out of Chapin. And they're actually going to move him to tight end. They're actually going to move him to tight end. So where, where, did, where did they go? Well, he left. Oh, that's right. He said he was leaving. That's right. Dang. That's right. That's right. He was leaving. Cool. Anyway, Stockner has three. They have three or two. I'd have to look. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't checked. I believe it or not. When is Stockner draft eligible? Question. Somebody out there in the comments might know. I, I just, dude, I've been going a thousand miles an hour, and I, I have not. I have not. Uh, I have not looked at that, so I have not looked at that. Uh, Rocket Bane, you can actually watch the call-in show, believe it or not, on Backstreet Bar Grill's Facebook. They stream it on there, so the more that you know. Stockner graduated in 19. 20, 21. I mean, this, he would be a, he would have been a sophomore this year, so going, but COVID, but COVID, so, but he's draft eligible going into next season. He's, he is a draft eligible player. So, hey, ideally, 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 Rattler and Stockner both get drafted because they just bought out for us and had insane years. Uh, I would take it. I don't really know, guys. Again, taking your questions, your comments, calls 843 Again, if you're tuned in on the podcast, do appreciate you all. If you're tuned in on the podcast, like I said, I know this is a little bit unorthodox, but, hey, this is National Signing Day week, and normally I would go home after this and record a podcast, but – with Beamer's call-in show, being at Tin Roof, we're talking about all the same things. I'll be hitting the podcast anyways, and I just really selfishly don't want to be up until midnight editing and recording. So hopefully that's how everything everybody else out there. But uh, no, either way, guys, I, I really am excited for this class. I, I know we got the, the gut punch early in the day about the, the Barham news, and it is what it is. Uh, all you got is all you need. We, we got the guys that Beamer said want to be Gamecocks. We got good football players, too. It's not like we're, we're going out there taking. We got a great defensive coordinator. Yeah. Really yeah, we got a great DC. We're fine. And, again, it, it, makes the, it makes the pickup of Stone Blanton that much bigger. You know, and, and that's I guess that's the other reason. Again, I don't – finding out what we know now, I don't like how J. Sean Ball handled about it. Scumbag. Dude. And, I, and I don't blame the kid. I blame the parents. Terrible move. Awful. You, you don't work that way in the real world. And I see your text. You don't work that way in the real world. But this morning when it first happened, I said, you know what? When we get a kid to flip to us, he's a genius. He's awesome. We love him. But when a kid flips away, it's just it giveth and it taketh. I mean, it's just recruiting. Recruiting giveth. Recruiting taketh away. It just does. It just does. Right? It just, it's just like, hey, it's just like playing Call of Duty and you're trying to snipe somebody and Kind of have like a, or like a blind shot. You get them when you get shot. It giveth and it taketh away. It, oh, hey, yeah. the, 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 the claymore giveth and the claymore taketh away. Right? We've all been there. We've all been on the wrong side of that. So. Claymore does give it though. Oh, very often, but sometimes it do take. It, it do. It really do take. Um, 
Another guy I'm really high on in the class, man, Anthony Rose, I would say is a sleeper as well, a guy you got to flip back to. I remember talking uh, to a couple of Gamecock football staff guys over the summer about this kid. Really, really good player. Emily, Emory Floyd, I should say. And you got a lot of defensive backs. Another DB out of Powder Springs, Georgia, three-star player. I mean, you went heavy defense. There's no question. It, it's kind of like, I mean, you went very heavy defense. Um, another kid, by the way, that I didn't realize this, Kaysen Henry, three-star offensive lineman out of Marietta. He actually chose the game cops over UNC. So uh, six foot six, 290 is what he'll come in at. So a big kid. Yeah, all the other line. Yeah, you'll see 6'5, 265 is Grayson Baines. Uh, and then your size on the defensive line, you've got DeAndre Martin, who's 6'4 and a half, 290. Demetrius Watson, 6'2 and a half, 285. You've got Felix Hickson, who's 6'3, 285. Uh, yeah, you got some big dudes coming in for sure. You got size. You got size. It's all one of the trenches. We saw it this year. It's one of the trenches, no doubt. No doubt. But. Uh, yeah. Hey, so. Chris, real quick. Yeah. How, how many more commits can we give out? Or, like, if you believe, can you take That's a great question. What's up, my guy? That's a great question. So, Beamer actually addressed that and just said they have a lot of flexibility in regards to scholarships. He didn't put a specific number on it because a lot of that's going to depend on transfer portal, who leaves, who stays. And I guess that's just, that's honestly just one of the challenges of being a head coach now. I mean, it's, it's free agency, right? And we're seeing it all over the place. Um, quarterbacks leaving, players leaving. I think there's like, what's the number? It's like, it's got to be more than 200, right? I don't know why the number 200 is going to There's a lot of players in the transfer portal. A lot of them. A lot of them. I mean, again, today alone, we had two guys in it with Jason Brown and Akeem Ola. Jason Brown and Akeem Ola both into the portal. So uh, they've got flexibility, and people made a point to point that out. They do have flexibility when it comes to numbers and scholarships. And, and uh, listen, I, we're, we're not that man. The, the, the transfer portal. Shane Beamer has shown that, again, he's not going to sit on his hands. He's not going to just wait and hope that things get better. They're going to go out and be good football players. They're, they're going to use – and I think Beamer – listen, I said this on the show earlier this week, and I'll say it yet again. There's one coach in the state that is anti-transfer portal and anti-NIL, and, and this is what's wrong with college football, that's what's wrong with college football, and it's supposed to bitch and moan and complain about how things are. There's another coach in the state – that is player-centric, embraces the transfer portal, goes out and gets a big-time quarterback and a big-time tight end, and embraces what the NIL presents to players and what it brings, and knows they didn't come here to play no school, they came here to play football. And that coach is in Columbia, and the other slap dicks up in Clemson. So, I mean, you know, listen, adapt or die. You could not like how college football is now. You, you could not like the NIL. You could not like what happened today with Florida State and that top kid choosing Florida State and Marshall Sports giving him $1.5 million. And I'll say this, and I'll say this too, because I got a text from somebody, one of my buddies, that said, we got to get our big-time boosters. We got to get our big-time boosters to pony up, open their wallets, and get this program where it needs to be. Listen, if you're stupid enough to pay a high school kid a million dollars to come to your school, so be it. I wouldn't advise anybody to do it, though. An unproven high school prospect? You got to be kidding me, dude. The kid's not your daddy outside. Like, give me a break. So, listen, if Bar- and I get it, man. Dave Portnoy, savvy businessman, all Gucci. But, nah, bro, I, I wouldn't give a damn if TSU has a little. I'm not giving Jay Sean Barr a million dollars. I don't give a damn. He can go to Maryland and play in front of 10,000 people and kick rocks for like here. I'm not, I'm not giving a kid a million dollars to play here. Antonio Williams? No. No. Not now I wouldn't. Surely enough, I wouldn't. So that kid was, yeah, I, mean, that, I guess we've talked about that. But that, that, that kid was waiting on that Clemson offer, Antonio Williams from Dutch Fork. And that's fine. So be it. But he was waiting on that Clemson offer from the jump, and, and he got it. What, so, so be it. Whatever it is, what it is. Uh, wish the best. Uh, all good. It's what it is. Um, by the way, Shane Beamer asked about what did you see at Spencer Rattle in Oklahoma, and he simply answered, wins. I saw a lot of wins. So, yeah. I think he's I, – I, like I said, I, I'm on cloud nine, man. You missed on a linebacker, you got a big-time quarterback. I'm, 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 I'm Gucci. I'm fine. I'm, I'm not sweating it. It's all good. Uh, yeah, two big-time quarterbacks with Braden Davis, too. So we're not done. We're not done. We're not done. Yeah. We're, we're going – We're going to, and I think it, I said this a couple weeks ago, a school like South Carolina 
you can really hammer the transfer portal and use it to your advantage. I mean, it's, it's in previous scenarios where it took five to six years to rebuild, yeah. now it can take two to three because you can go out and get a guy, hey, guess what? You know what the better thing about, or the great thing about Spencer Rattlers compared to Braden Davis? Spencer Rattler has actually performed at the Power 5 level and had success. You know, I mean, a high school kid to a degree, which is, again, why I would never sign some crazy NIL deal for a high school. It's a, you don't know how they're going to perform. You don't know how they're going to handle college life. You don't know if they're going to, you know, and I think what's really going to happen, I'll tell you this, I would watch these kids get these deals, these, these, these huge, and that's fine. Hey, the players should have an IL. They should have the opportunity to make money. I am not against it. I'm for it. I'm for it. Because the NCAA has exposed kids forever. So go get your paper. Watch the families of these kids, though. It's like when people win the lottery, man. It's like when they win the lottery. I, I can just see it ending very poorly. I'll just put it that way. For the, I don't know about for the kid. Well, I, I don't know about NIL as a whole, because, again, I think for 99.9% of people and players, it, not everybody's getting paid $1.5 million. Most are not. Most are guys like Eric Stevenson, who we partner with. Hey, we're yeah, going yeah. to sell some T-shirts, and yeah. we'll throw you some beer money in. All cool. We, I get to make great merch. You get to ball out and be represented on on, on t-shirts and hoodies and all that. And we get to rock it. And it's all good, right? It's, it's a mutually beneficial partnership. But yeah, I mean, they, the majority of kids are not getting a billion dollars. You know what I mean? Not everybody's Quinn Ewers. Not everybody's whatever that kid's name is that went to Jackson State. Which you know, he's gonna get his paper. Look at him hit the transport next year or Florida State. Hey, get ready to push the Heisman back. And, and Peyton, by the way, made a great point. And I won't read the text verbatim. <laughs> I certainly won't read it verbatim. But I do agree with his sentiment. I'd rather lose Jay Sean Barham and the class be ranked 21st on Rivals or 23rd on 24-7 than pick him up knowing what we know now and the class be ranked 17. I, I just, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, what, what difference would it have made if you picked him up and, well, the class is 17th, and then he transferred up to spring practice? Who gives a damn? He's not even here anymore. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Keep it PG for the kids. Zachary Barker says, favorite player in the class, Keenan Nelson Jr. I do like Keenan Nelson a lot. I'm a big Keenan Nelson guy. And Landon Sampson. Another big, yeah, I'm a, I'm, I like Landon Sampson as well, man. I, I, I know Justin Stepp loves the kid. Justin Stepp loves the kid. Uh, sleeper, Kaysen Henry and Anthony Rose. Guys, tomorrow. Like it as well for sure. Um, let's see. James Drake, did Maryland really tell Jay Sean to commit to us then flip, or did some late money come in? That's, that's, up, for, that's up for you to decide. I mean, listen, was there a bag involved? Maybe. Did we throw a bag at Rattler? Probably. All is fair. All is fair. It is what it is. I think they didn't tell him to do it, but I think that they okayed. They okayed. Right, 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 right. For sure. For sure. I mean, I, I have to think Maryland put a bug in his ear, like, "Hey, you, uh, you know, you, you want to make us look really good and help us out? Well, you know, uh, you, you should commit to Carolina and flip. We'll sign it. I, I, you know, again, you know, Dalton asked why. I don't know why. I don't know. If I knew, I'd tell you. I don't know. No idea. It makes no sense. I'm telling you. Nobody gets it. Right. Nobody gets it. Nobody gets it. Nobody gets it. Where's that guy? Because I'd be like, let me hit the nobody gets it button. Because you're right. You wouldn't have to hit a button. Right. I wouldn't have to hit a button. I'm yeah, telling you, the NIL, after what we saw today, pissing off the big power five schools to go to a tiny school. Right. That's going to piss them off. It's pissed off a lot of people. And I'm telling you. What's going to happen? It's going to go back to. Big schools are pissed off. Player goes to a small school instead of their school. What's going to happen? It's a beautiful thing. We are not a big school. Well, I mean. The, well, so what's what's going to be the result now? What's going to be the result? I was talking to my buddy a little bit. They're going to make they're going to make some changes where you got to sign and then you can get IL deals, or you got to wait a year and then you can get deals. You know, there, there's just going to be a change because that's doing better than some NFL players. You know, he just got paid more. You know, than, than some kickers on the NFL team. I don't know how much NFL players get, but they should not be getting paid that much money. So do you think, let me ask you this, do you think that kid that went to Jackson State to Florida State, do you think he went there solely or at least his lead reasoning was because of the NIL? 
You think he switched from? I'm asking you. I'm asking you. Do you think that he went there solely because he and I? Yes or no? I, 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 I'm going to yes. make a point. Yes. If the answer is yes, which it probably is, the answer is yes. I don't want him anyways. If your sole reason to go to a school with NIL, then I don't want you to play for me anyways. Because Brad Lowing literally sat up here and said that the kids that are most focused yeah. on getting attention, yeah. and I would count NIL as attention. They most of them don't pan out anyways. They, they just don't. They, they, they don't. They don't. A guy like Jay Sean Barham, hey, maybe he'll go via an NFL Hall of Famer. But that to, 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 to do that, to, then you, you're probably not going to be okay. worth a shit yeah. anyways for us. So what difference does it make? It's, you know, being coached by prime time and FCS competition, I'm also like, hey, I can't go here, but I can't get back. I mean, I, I, listen, I, I get it. He, but the reason that that all happened, again, Dion works for Barstool. What's good for Dion's good for Barstool. So, D- Dion literally went on Barstool's whatever show it is yesterday, Wednesday, or excuse me, Tuesday night, and said, I'll watch on signing day. Something big's coming. He knew. I mean, he knew. They had a deal in the works the entire time. Had a deal the entire time. We're getting NCAA back. See, Tucker says it won't last a year until until TSUS in five years is blown up and I'm throwing the bag at everybody. Yeah. And I have the boost! Yeah. I want to start making up like fake company names and just be like, oh, he's sponsored by this company. And all, we're, just, we're just the mastermind behind it all. We're throwing everybody like 250 grand in a briefcase. Like, here you go. I'll yeah. I'll hey, nobody hate it when Nobody's going to hate when NCAA comes back. That's a fact. That's a fact. That is a fact. Great day to have a day. Great night to have a night. Great night to drink some cold beer. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Great night to come out and see, see Jomo at old uh, hey, Tim the Roof. Hey, throw, some, throw some tips at Jomo. Boy, what a, I tell you what, if you missed, if you missed last Wednesday, what a, what a fiasco that was. What a, what a time that was. <laughs> Just goes to show you when, when all the service industry folk come into one spot, it gets, it gets ugly. It gets ugly. It gets ugly. Ugly fast. It's very ugly. Very fast indeed. Nah, we had a good time. We had a very good time. Unexpected, but a very good time. Um, anyways, guys, looking at the class. Because again, we're continuing to talk South Carolina's recruiting class. Gamecock sitting right now. And I'll refresh this. Yep, 23rd. And, I, and I, let's let's look at all the recruiting classes. The team rankings. Let's see if I can pull it up. The team rankings. Wait, is this first one the bigger one? Or does it, I mean, this, so, I would say like 90% of guys signed on the early signing day. It's All this is, it's just the first day everyone can sign. You can still sign tomorrow. This is just the first day. You can sign on February the 4th, which is like the normal signing day, which, I, you know, the early signing day, it's cool. I, I, I'm not, like, going to complain. I kind of miss National Signing Day, like, truly the National Signing Day. That was fun. They need to change the schedule because having two signing days were, like, one. It makes it really tough on coaches. It's making it tough on coaches, for sure. True. All right, here are the team rankings. And here's an update. da 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 24-7 sports, the number one class in college football, the Texas A&M Aggies. They have taken over Alabama. The number one spot, let's see, we got a call here, man. Let's see who this is. Let's take this call. Hey, go ahead and fire up with your question, my guy. We'll take it off the air. What's going on? Um, I 
Shane Beamer's presser, and I'm sure he's going to stress this again tonight in his call-in show. I don't know if anybody else caught this as I oh, pour yeah. myself another cold beverage. Oh, yeah. I don't know if anybody else caught this, but Beamer was asked, I don't exactly know what the, the question was specifically, but he was asked about the class, whatever, and mentioned guys like Landon Sampson, mentioned guys... Uh, just throughout the class, and compared it to the classes when he was at South Carolina the first time. And again, exactly what he referenced is what I've been saying. That he said, you know, we had guys, maybe they weren't household names, but through development and got them on campus and they were the right fit and they turned out to be superstars. So he said that he felt like this class very much resembled those classes they were pulling in. And again, I understand every coach in America it's, it's just like the when we have the, the welcome home tour of the summer, right? Every coach is saying how great they are. Everything's positive. But I just think early on in his tenure, that's that's going to be the strategy. You're, you know, would I have loved to have seen the Gamecocks finish 15th? Hell yeah, I would have loved to have seen it. But realistically, if we can recruit 20th to 25th every year, I'm, you know, at least for the first couple, I'm not going to complain. Hey, the problem before wasn't the recruiting. It wasn't that our class was ranked this or that. We could not develop. We've had a severe development issue. So you need to be master talent evaluators. You've got to be master talent developers. You got them on camp. Now, now you've signed these guys now. Hey, you got Spencer Rattler. You better get the most out of them. That's, that's the big thing. You better get the most out of them because, hey, with a guy like Rattler, he's got talent. We know he does. So if he plays like crap, we're going to have some very big issues, right? All of all of champ classes, besides last year, all of champ Two of the four, not to cut you off, but two of the four highest rated commits ever, signees ever, Carolina history, came in a Mustang. And what have they done? Zach Pickens and Jordan Murphy, what have they done? And no disrespect to the guys, but what have they done? Boys, Haven't done a damn thing. Yeah. Haven't done a damn thing. Like How many times you hear Jordan Murphy's name after the EIU game? I don't remember him playing. So, you got to develop. Recruiting and, and, and getting the commit is only half the battle. It is half the battle. So, you know, don't mean jack shit if you're a four star, but, you know, look at, look at, no offense again, but look at Ortre Smith. God, look at Josh Van till this year. Did nothing. Look at Dak Joyner. And somebody, and he mentioned Luke Doty, by the way. We can get to that point. Luke Doty. The number one goal for Luke Doty, do not let him turn into Dak Joyner 2.0. Yeah. Make a plan for him and get the most out of him. Because the going back and forth from quarterback to receiver and, and not really knowing how to utilize him. And he, and then you know what happens? You get to his final year like Dak Joyner did, and he's just nothing. He just isn't good at anything. At least be good at one thing. At least be good at something. You know? If you're a jack of all trades, you're a master of none. Got to be good at something. Are you better? Joseph Anderson. Joseph Anderson? Yeah. God, he just fell off the map, too. Four star out of Tennessee. We beat Tennessee, right? For him? Yeah. High rated four star. Did nothing. So, again, it's about Jimmy's and Joe's. I mean, stars are great. But I will tell you this I talked over the summer to a guy that's right now on the Gamecocks football staff. And I don't know how hard you have to think to know who it is because I've been pretty good with who my buddies are on the staff. But, you know. I talked to him over the summer, very notable assistant coach, and was asking about, I was like, how much do stars mean? Recruit? As Brad Long said, they don't look at stars, right? They don't look at stars. They don't. They don't. How important are stars? He said, Chris, the top 100 guys, the top 100 guys. The five star, those, those get like, there are some guys that are certainly no brainers, right? Those top 100 guys are, they're pretty damn good, right? You're not top 100 by accident. But he's like, where recruiting is really one, is determining the difference between the 300th ranked player and the 600th ranked player. Both three stars, 
or one's maybe a low four and one's a high three. Hey, guess what? People ask me, is Jalen Snead going to flip? Jalen Snead? I was told they didn't even like Jalen Snead. They, they thought he was trash. There's a surprise. They thought he sucked. Then you look at a guy like uh, a Nicky Memori from Irmo. They called him early and said, we loved him. They said he should be a four-star, no question. But because of COVID, he didn't have as much film. They're like, dude, he's a freak. He's a physical specimen. Yeah, dude, DBU, baby. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's an imperfect science. Like, I'm not sitting here going to tell you that old stars mean nothing. Because guess who's, guess who's top five? A&M, Bama, Georgia, Ohio State, Texas. I mean, I guess outside of Texas, those teams are all pretty good. Penn State, six. They're pretty good. Notre Dame, seven. UNC ninth, which the hell of them. Michigan ninth, Oklahoma tenth. Here's where it gets really wacky. Missouri's eleventh in recruiting. Yeah, they, one one five stars, seven four stars, and eight three stars. Kentucky is twelfth, which they've got a five star. Blows my mind. Tennessee is thirteenth. They had a huge signing day. That's it. We're just talking ratings. We're on the list. Tennessee thirteen, Auburn fourteen, Stanford fifteen. How about this? Clemson at sixteen. They got 13. FSU at 17, even without – can you imagine they got the number one prize back? Good Lord. They finished at 17, or at least they're at 17 now. LSU at 18, Arkansas at 19, Indiana at 20, Michigan State 21, Mississippi State 22, South Carolina 23, Ole Miss 24, and Iowa 25. Other notables, Maryland to 28. Uh, Vandy at 37, by the way. Clark Lay is, is doing work. Go ahead. Question from the crowd. Here we go. Um, from what you've seen over Shane Beamer over the years and what you've seen from the must champ. Right. The Spurs Up show is brought to you by our friends over at Drizzly. Guys, friends over, binge watching your favorite show, cat on your lap. No matter your reasons for wanting to stay put, keep your feet up and get beer, wine, and spirits delivered to you in under 60 minutes with our friends over at Drizzly. Guys, Drizzly is the most convenient way to buy beer, wine, and spirits with delivery to your doorstep in under 60 minutes. They're also the number one app for alcohol delivery, the convenience of home delivery in under 60 minutes, when you need it, when you want it, guys, the convenience, you shop across stores so you can choose from a huge selection and get exactly what you want. You can also get the most value when you shop across multiple stores to compare prices and find the best deals on exactly what you're looking for. Guys, right now our friends at Drizzly are giving all new customers $5 off their first order with the code FAST5. So go download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y.com and use promo code FAST5 for $5 off your first order. Who do you think can develop better talent and find better recruited talent? Right. So, the, so let me ask you this. Do you ask who, who's the better recruiter? Are you also asking that question? Yes. Because I've been asked that. Who's the better recruiter? Who, who's better finding in high school that guy? Should one class? All right. So here, here's what I would say. Well, I, I mean, he, he was in a city. Yeah, what? The Oklahoma. Team. I'll, I'll tell you this: is that question's come up? But, hey, who's a better recruiter, Must Champ or Kirby? Listen, and you can take it back. Like, how good is this recruiting class? The reality is, and the, the one thing that Must Champ said, I will actually really agree with him. You won't know for two, three, or four years. You just won't. We just won't know. Hey, when the 07 class was signed, that included players like Garcia. I think Devontae Holland was in that class. Melvin Ingram was in that class. Travian Robertson, Patrick Demarco. Ryan Maddox. There were other great people. We didn't, you know, you knew ratings-wise and stars. That's all great. That class is good. But it wasn't until 2009, 2010 that you were like, oh, that, that's the, a legendary class. That's the class that changed everything. Truly, that was the class that changed everything. So we sit here December the 15th, 2021. Hopefully, on December the 15th or whatever day, 2023, we're like, wow, that first full class for Beamer was the game changer. That was a great class. You know what I mean? So I've been, we're just not going to know. You know How well can Beamer develop talent? I don't know. Are three or four of the most legendary game talks of all time in this recruiting class? I mean, if they are, then, you know, I think it speaks for itself, right? Yeah. Proof's in the pudding. It is. Proof's in the pudding. Let me ask you this. Yeah. You cover you guys every day. Yeah, but good. 
cover every day. You are correct, yes. This is, as Kevin Kisner once said, this ain't a hobby. How do you feel about Steph and Peterson's tweet? I Steph, yeah, so here we go, here we go. I'm glad you brought this up. The question was, how do I feel about Justin Steph and Mike Peterson's tweet? Mike Peterson this morning, in case you missed it, said, Buck life, it ain't for everybody. And if you don't know who that was in reference to, then you're an idiot. It's not. It was in representation of Morgan. And then Justin Stepp, I don't remember exactly what his tweet said. What we're building here is special. What we're building here is special. Right. It ain't, it ain't for everybody. Right. It honestly goes in line with how our coaching staff acted all season. Our coaching staff was very passive aggressive. I mean, I, I think I've read some of it to you, like when, when about play calling and scheme. And, I mean, what Satterfield stood in front of a microphone. In front of the media, talking to you know, knowing, knowing fans would hear him, and said he was asked about is your scheme complex? He said high schools run our scheme. No, it's not complex. It's very simple. He didn't give a damn. I, I don't mind it. I mean, yeah, I like we got a little swagger. We got a little attitude. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Per sources, per sources. Per sources, man. Per sources. Per sources. I got a guy. I got a guy. He's got that. Per sources. Hey, let me, let me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on, let's see how this, I should do that. We should see how it goes on Twitter. I'm going to say, per, per bartender J-Mo at Tin Roof. And just like, see what people are going to be like, are you serious? Just per, per totally anonymous source that I did not just say on the air. Well, I'm not asking you to reveal your story. I'm not asking you to. Hey, you got a guy, I got a guy, he's got a guy, she's got, we all got, this is a, this is, this is have a guy season, right? This is per sources season. This is per sources season. Right? You, hey, bad time of the year to not have a guy. You know what I mean? Horrid time of the year to not have a guy. So, yeah, at least one guy. At least one guy. That's why Jamie is still single, because all the girls is like have the same attitude. Uh, Gotta have a guy, at least one. <laughs> Many other reasons. Yeah. Oh, here we go. That's not Frankie's, right? No, no, no. Wouldn't even take her to Frankie's. You know she's a bad egg. Jeez, that, I mean, J-Mo loves Frankie. She doesn't like dogs. Whoa. Doesn't like dogs. I bet J. Sean Barham doesn't like dogs. Hey, I bet Jay Sean Barry meant like that. Makes sense. What makes sense? I bet Jeff SEC Football 2 and Jeff needs some perspective. It's a great night to have Spencer Rattler and Ray Davis as quarterbacks. Indeed. Indeed, it's a great night for that. I will say one of the funniest things I saw today, though, was I was tuned in to Shane Beamer's uh, press or whatever talking to recruiting. And there was somebody on there with the YouTube name Spencer Rattler commenting. I'm so happy to be in Columbia, man. And I was like, guys, that's not really good. Like, you think he's just on the YouTube chat? Just W's in the chat? Hey, hey, Shane Beamer's on the chat. Yeah, Shane Beamer's also tuning in the Daily Road Daily comedy, right? For sure. What are the chances of Rattler playing in North Carolina? They're zero if possible because he's literally legally cannot play. Why not? Because you can't, you can't play for two teams in the same season and the bowl game counts as the season. It's like literally, literally illegal. Literally. What about uh, what about Jossie? Jossie. Hey, Jossie was Jossie was very hyped about the game box and Spencer Brown. So. Yeah. Oh my God! Here we go. Oh, I know who this is now. This is this is Blaine. That's that's who this is in the Twitch because this is his latest comment. Per Jabo, per Jabo sources. The notoriously controversial tin roof beverage, the tin roofie, works in less than 30 minutes. Uh, Blaine Lee, or anything that guy's name? He got banned from Facebook for bullying Clemson fans. So, yeah, I don't know. He's a real MVP. He is. He is true. I mean, that, that dude's hysterical. MVP of the tin roof chat. We should have those like end of the year awards, like the most valuable commenter of the year. Because there are, you, I could definitely. Name a few for sure. The Daily Pro and then and Tin Roof go down. It's like the most valuable commenter of the year award goes to. I don't know. It's still fucked up. 
Well, soon, and, you know, I, I, I tweeted it, and then I honestly deleted it because I was like, I, I don't want to I don't want to inject negative vibes today, but as soon as Barham, it was announced he signed, I said, well, here comes the life support tweets again. Right, 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 uh, so, yeah. Here they come. I am legend. Mr. I am legend. Yeah. Wait, can we get even a better linebacker than baseball, dude? Yeah, Stone Blanton. Slugger, by the way. I mean, it, technically, is he higher rated? No, they're both four stars. And, I mean, whatever, bro. So, yeah. so, that kid's literally going to play football. And, and baseball. Football. And then drop bombs at Founders. Yeah. yeah. Nukes, bro. 6'2", 220 already. He's a senior in high school. Bro, he's as big as me. <laughs> You're like, damn, we got you playing linebacker. Wrong. We're screwed. Now he's a little thicker than I am. He got, he got about, he got, he, he's actually got about 20 pounds on me. So, Jesus Christ, Adam Prentice. Never knew her. Yeah, as 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 everyone as everyone who ever comments on anyone who enters the transfer portal ever on Instagram the comments, who? Oh yeah. yeah. It don't matter who it is. Who? I'm surprised that Jason Brown would didn't. I'm shocked. And I will say this, just speaking on that again, the big news today, which wasn't shocking, and I got a text last night from somebody, man, Jason Brown is, is pissed at, at, at Spencer Rattler King. I'm like, who gives a shit? I mean, this is SEC football. This is not Pop Warner. This isn't Pee Wee. This isn't participation. We're trying to win. People's jobs are on the line. I, I will tell you this. Am I, am I surprised? that Jason Brown is not playing in the bowl game. Yes, I am, because guess what? I don't know when the next time, if ever, he will take a snap for an SEC school as a starting quarterback every year. So the answer is never, actually, because I don't. Wait. Where's he going to go? Who's going to be a quarterback? You have Seth Nolan and Colton Gothier, and per sources, Matt Jordan. Her source. Her source. Her sources. Her sources. Her sources. Dak Joyner was taking first team reps. This is not my source. I'm just don't shoot the messenger. I'm just rehashing what I was just literally told. This you know what this sounds like? It sounds like like that sounds like what J Mo said. It sounds like we'd be at 10 Roof at like 2 a.m. shit hammer. Be like, man, you know Dak was taking first team reps now? Like, bro, you're 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 blackout. What, what are you? <laughs> what are you talking about? I hope. Cool, cool. What a way to kick off 2022. We'll just we'll, we'll do the next Tin Roof show. And, like I was right. Hey, fuck y'all! I got to say Rattler's coming in starting. Rattler literally cannot legally play. It says legally cannot play. It says immediately. We'll put it in the motion. Motion. It says you can play immediately. Well, your source is wrong. Mama's wrong again. Uh, no, it's, 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 uh, you know, I, I, I understand Jason Brown hitting the portal. I, I thought he would do it after, after the bowl game, but I mean, if he, yeah, listen, if he, if he feels like it's in his best interest and he's going to get a jump on the transfer portal and start looking at other schools, and he, hey, he wants to use his SEC film and, and, and go somewhere that I, I, I got nothing but well wishes. I will tell you this. I posted it a little bit earlier. A thank you to Jason Brown. And I mean every word because you know what? Jason Brown provided me two of the best nights I've had at Willie B in a long time. I mean, truly. Did he not? That Florida win. That Florida win was one of the most fun nights I've had at Willie B in forever. I, I mean, I literally, when's the last time we had a night game? And maybe I'm forgetting one that was very recent. But the last really fun night game? Tennessee in 2016? I mean, it was, it was I'm saying I know what was after it. Hey, it was cold as hell that night. You were dropping the wall over my head. I didn't give a yeah, shit. Yeah, well, we were on another planet. Or we, were, <laughs> we were probably where JMO source is right now. This is me. This is me. Yeah. So, Justin Langford said J- Jason Brown's going to go to OU. No, I heard St. Francis. He's going back to St. Francis. He, go, he said he's going to post a graphic. St. Francis, we're going to run it back one more time. Zep, one more time. Hey, Zeb's still hurt. His sources. No, Zeb was practicing. From what I saw, Zeb was practicing. What about Luke Doty? Hey. Yeah, what about Luke Doty? 
Uh, Luke Cody literally had surgery. Oh, that's so right. he's, he's out. Most obvious dude of the day said, Saul Colton's practicing. Saul Colton's practicing. I hope he was practicing. I hope he was practicing. I mean, listen, man, again, this is SEC ball. If you don't like competition, then I don't want to tell you. Man. But, yeah, I uh, – and then, again, like I said, J.J. Nibari, and the, the, the take that I knew it never would happen but shouldn't have been a take this morning. And, hey, I would love to get y'all speaking. We, 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 we can really dive into some stuff now and banter. J.J. Nibari, the player of the draft, he's opting out for the bowl game, which I'd assume if Beamer was – very, hey, you got to ask them, but I mean, they're not playing in the bowl game. Quan White, not playing in the bowl game, the draft. I don't like People them. coming into the mention saying these guys are quitting and they are not fulfilling their obligations. They aren't. That's bullshit. That is bullshit. That is bullshit. That is bullshit. Hey, what's up with Harris? It didn't, it, you said something real close about some weird sketchy shit about Harris. Hey, resources. Hey, resources. The, the linebacker from Notre Dame. Right, that tour is in the bowl. Game. Right, in the bowl. Game. He was a surefire top ten pick, not, not first uh, round, right. top ten. Yeah, he ended up getting taken in the second round. No I will game. say this: Listen, do I like my favorite players not playing in the bowl game? I, I know I don't love it. I, I, I don't. I don't hope more of it happens. Do I understand it? Yeah. And I said this today on social media. I'll say it again, and people might be taken aback at this, but this is a newsflash. Your favorite players don't love your school as much as you do. Most of them. They don't. J.J. Nickbari, I'm sure he loves being a Gamecock, but he don't love being a Gamecock more than he loves going in the first round and getting first round money. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't love winning the Duke's Mayo Bowl more than being a first round draft. He doesn't. He doesn't. And fans also need to understand that it's not what Monk and J.C. did last year when they opted out on Gamecock. So, I mean, I'm not saying I love it, and I understand the old heads, shout out to the old heads, will say, you finish what you start. And I get it. Man. Everybody's wired different. Hey, Matt Corral's playing. Matt Corral is playing, right? Some guys are going to play. Some aren't going to play. But I'm just not, and I said this on the Daily Crew earlier today, I'm just not willing to die on the ledge of going on record calling everybody the opts out of a bowl game a quick. I just, I'm not willing to die on the ledge. I'm not going to go after them, but they are definitionally quitters. I mean, I guess definitionally, def, I can't even say the word, definitionally, they, they are. I mean, and people say, well, they're, they're not Gamecock greats, and they'll forever for, for be this and that. But like, I mean, people have said this in the background, and nobody cares. Is anybody, is anybody still mad he didn't play in the freaking Belt Bowl? Is anybody upset? I mean, I'm upset we lost 28 nothing, and I was there, sat through it, but I'm not, I mean, No, you're good. You're good. Yeah, this is open for him. Let me ask you this. What in the hell is 90 year old Matt Brown and Jimbo Fisher selling? Yeah, oh, what are Matt Brown and Jimbo selling? Great question. Fucking bat. Great question. Matt Brown, especially. Matt Brown might not be alive in three years. Great question. What are what are what are they selling that Miami's not, who's 60th in recruiting? And I don't know where where is Florida? That's Matt Brown was retiring. First source. Yeah, first source is Matt Brown. What is he selling? Everybody's got a source. First source is Matt Brown retiring. First source. Kyla Horton just signed as an uh, LOI. Welcome home, Kyla Horton. Matt Boy. Kyla Horton, the receiver. So that is. I don't well, think I Kyla Horton is. He is from Somerton, South Carolina, six foot three, one ninety. So, give you some more size on the outside, six foot three, one ninety. I heard that Chase kid's pretty damn good. Yeah, I, I think he's going to play tight end. It sounds like he's going to be in Eric Kimry's room, which is tight end. So, I think they're going to bulk him up. He's six two, two oh eight. Holy shit! I, I mean, it sounds like. So, yeah, we got we got Stogner for sure. Stogner is six six, two thirty five. That's the biggest he, baby. That's more damn. Six four two eight. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's look at Stoddard. Who is he compared to in his recruiting profile? I'm very curious. Because you know they'll do like a comparison on the kid. His comparison was Jake Butt. 
Jake Butt. He was projected as a fourth to seventh round draft pick. Coming out of high school. Coming out of high school. So, by the way, for those asking about Stone Blanton, how he projects as a baseball player, uh, Perfect Game ranks these guys. And, I mean, Perfect Game is one of the top. Payton can vouch. They're one of the top. It's the top, you know, service for, you know. Would you say it's the top, like, because they have their own travel teams, right? Summer teams, whatever. Are they the top for that, too? Or is it kind of just that crash? Yeah. Yeah, Perfect Game's the top for. Right. Okay. So they're they're the they're the top for like travel ball and, and showcase baseball and ranking prospects. And their their word is good. So they rank the prospects on a scale of one to ten, one being the worst, ten being the best, and they break down uh, their rankings. And so I'll, I'll I'll give you exactly what they said about the kid. It's very short, sweet, to the point. But they rated him a nine out of ten yes. as a baseball player. And the projection reads as this, potential top 10 round pick and or highest level college prospect. So Mark Kingston also got him a good player. And I had, this ain't per sources, this is direct to your guys. Blake Cooper, I don't think I'm ever dropping the name. Blake Cooper is a good buddy of mine, pitched at South Carolina World College World Series champion, currently the pitching coach at the Citadel. He reached out to me and told me the night before Sunday, he said, or the night before I think Blanton committed, said, hey, just tune in tomorrow. It's going to be fun. And I was like, he's a pretty good ball player too, right? I knew what he was talking about. He's a pretty good ball player. He's like, hitter, dot, dot, dot. So I don't know that Blanton, or Blanton's going to be an all-world outfielder in the field, but apparently he smashes. Apparently he smashes. Whatever. Put him wherever. I don't care. Put him at DH. Put him at DH. So, but I mean, you look at him, he's, he's, I mean, be a senior in high school, bro, he's, he's, he's built. He's absolutely built. So, um, John Jones breaking the Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Again, 8 4 3 0 3 3 7 guys, we're going to be, we will be live running right about 10 minutes. And this is, this is flown by this entire day. This, this week is just, just blur, man. With all, with all the news, <laughs> you know, starting out Monday night with Spencer Rattler and Stogner. It all started with Takarias. It, it, it all started. All started at Montezuma's. Is that that's it, right? Montezuma's. Yeah. 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 Very good, too. Very good. Very good. Very good. Ate it for leftovers the next day. Out of all the recruits besides that linebacker that went to Maryland, yeah. was I, there anyone else you were kind of surprised about that didn't come here, or did you kind of get everyone that we No, I, I think I was pretty I, – I wasn't surprised by anybody that didn't sign. No. I, I don't think there were really any – outside of the bar game, it wasn't like a super dramatic uh, sign. You know, like recency bias is a thing. So let me just say this. Our big news happened Monday night. Let's just say it did. Let's say it happened today. We are having a totally, like the vibe, I'm not saying the vibe's bad, but again, I think we're just, we're on cloud nine because of the, the rattler and stogger news versus being disgruntled and pissed off about the bar game. I mean, I think we'd still be pissed off, but it would be far overshadowed by hype. I, no, I get it. No, dude, I get it. Trust me. I, I, you know, I got on my laptop this morning just like, what the hell, dude? Like, what? I thought they were trolling. It's like, no. Indeed, signed his LOI to Maryland. I mean, dude, listen, if you'd rather go play college ball in Maryland than South Carolina, then you know what? So be it. So be it. So be it, man. And whatever. It is what it is. We, we wish, you, like Beamer said, he. He said, we wish you well, and I'm sure he wanted to say the same thing he said about Bobo. Hey, we wish you well, and I got nothing, but uh, we wish you well. That's pretty much it. So, and you just leave it at that. You just leave it at that. Uh, oh, my God. All right, I'm going to read this comment off. j will like this one. j will like this one. Blaine says, per sources, per sources, Dabo Sweeney admits that he, actually, you know what, I probably can't read this. No, I, I don't think I can, actually. I, I really don't. We will 
We will read this. No, I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't. No, I can't. I'll see y'all over like, I'll read it. No, I, I can't. Let me see it. Which one is it? The bottom the bottom. The bottom of the bottom. I, I don't, in this climate, I don't think that plays well. So I, I think I'm going to leave that one until after the show. We'll, we'll leave that one post show. Doesn't play well. No, it's on Twitch. Doesn't play well in today's program. We'll, we'll save it, TSUS After Dark. We'll post it in the Big Cock Club. Join the Big Cock Club. We'll post it in there. But I'm not going to go on record and read it aloud in this day and age when people can clip anything and transform it into anything they want. I'm just not going to do it. So uh, those in attendance, those in attendance, well, bro, there's 35 total in here, my guy. 35 to, Dude, there were 500 people Monday night after Battle. My guy said there were, this doesn't even count Twitter. He said there were 1,700 on Twitter too. After Rattler and Stodd right now. Hey, hey, good luck to him. Good luck to him. I agree. A good shit on the, the Allen score that you predicted. It was actually, the Allen score was close. It was actually a lot closer from what you said. Yeah. What did you say, like 117 to like 52? Right, right. Like, it, it, like 110 it, it, to 48 or something. Yeah, I, I don't like, know. Holy shit, you really actually predicted that one. I get some right, get a lot of them wrong, but I still get some right. That's a good move. Um, yeah, like I said, we're going to stay live about another 10 minutes or so. Shane, we're going on, on his uh, call-in show at Backstreet's Bar and Grill at 7. So be very curious to see what Coach Beamer has to say. And, uh, yeah, so anyway, 843 Again, again, guys. Gamecocks. Blaine also says, Dabo would prefer that you read it per sources. <laughs> Again, post show. Post show. We, we will, we will. Dabo and post show. Um, per sources. Per sources, yes. Per sources, we will get into a post show. Per sources. Gamecocks sit 20. All right, does this make you feel better? The Gamecocks are ranked 21st on rivals. I mean, the 21st ranked class is not bad. Let me ask you this. After last year, you finished 79th. I told you, hey, you're going to finish 21st next year. What would you have said? You'd be like jumping for joy. And thrilled. I mean, that Dal- Dalton's tough to please. I'm like, hell no. After the top, after the top 10 or 12, I think, I think Beaver could have done better than 12. I mean, what can he do about the bar hand thing, though? No, no, and again, I think the portal, I think the portal is going to be our best friend. I, I just, yeah. I think that. I, 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 I just I think the Oklahoma connection is not done. I think there's guys. Theo Weiss, he hadn't announced. He hadn't announced. So that would be a massive, massive get. Where else would he go? I, I don't know. Uh, but that would be a massive get. So I, I'd love to see. Wow. And get this. <laughs> Pro Football Focus. I didn't even see this till right now. Pete Alka want to pay attention to this. Pro Football Focus this morning put out an article. Can South Carolina win the SEC East in 2022 with Spencer Rattler? Yeah. <laughs> Holy smokes. Yeah, Hooker's back. Never met a never met a Hooker or Cock couldn't take. Until until we went to Knoxville and got the shit beat out of us. So that was a great line that week until we were down 28 on that first quarter. It was Peyton's fault. It was Peyton's fault. He, he went to the game. So did you. Both of you sucked then. I was sitting in damn Somerville. I had nothing to do with it. I was in there. I was in there. Don't you dare try to blame it on the T Shots. I can tell you that. Don't you dare. It sounds like that's what you're trying to do. Right? A little bit. I just want some appreciation for the storm I'm 
Uh, Jesse Jacobs says, yeah, because honestly, 21st, we're not a ton of great players in the not a ton of, see, I disagree that you said there's not a ton of great players in the class. I, I, I know it's a lot of three-star guys, but I think there's some, some I, I will tell you this. I think the one thing, as we kind of close up here, I, I think what this class is missing, and maybe you'll disagree, what this class is missing is a lot of, like, day one impact, guys. And I mean, like, like full-time starter, you know, do I think Landon Sampson is going to step on campus and be our number one receiver? No, I do not. Is Stone Blank going to be our number one linebacker? Probably not as a true freshman. Maybe a guy like Keenan Nelson Jr. really flourishes and shines as a freshman, but there's just not a lot of that type of star power where – but, I mean, again, again, if you factor in Spencer Rattle and Austin Steiger, that go you know, I mean, that's – you got to count them. You have to count them. What if you get Theo Weiss, too? What if it happens, hypothetically? I'd say the class is pretty good. You know? We're not done with the transfer board. And we're not done with the board. We're not done with the board. So, the biggest question I, I still say, too, and I, I agree, uh, J-Mo, actually, I can't believe he actually made a smart comment. He uh, he brought it up earlier, though, the offensive line. I, what do you, you know, and, and here's the problem with that, though. I think you've got to go to the board look at offensive linemen because, the last thing you want is to be playing a bunch of freshmen on the O line. Yeah. You know, you ideally you'd like to give O linemen two years to get in the weight. Yeah, at least to get in the weight room, develop. You know, you're physically just not there as a true freshman. I mean, these are grown men. You got guys like Jordan Davis playing across from you at Georgia, who, who's just a man child. You, you got you know big time guys you're going against. So. I don't know, man. Like, I know fans might hate to hear this, but I almost kind of think, like, a lot of our O-line issues, we just need to hope that the guys we have can get right. I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. Yeah, you, we need Bobby Haskins. Bobby Haskins? Yeah. Yeah. Debo Samuel was rated lower. Oh, yeah, Debo Samuel was very yeah, he knows, yeah. So, I mean, you never know, man. I mean, again, you look at a guy like Kyla Corton. Like, he, he could be – you look at a guy like Xavier Short. You never know. But, like I said, like I've been saying before, like I'll say again, we are card counters at the blackjack table. We have to be that. You're South Carolina. You're coming off of what was a disaster in the Will Muschamp era. You've never recruited consistently in a top 10 clip. And until you start winning 10 games a year, you're not going to. So your job is Shane Beaver. Recruit in a top 25 clip, take the 25th best class and make it play like the 15th best or the 10th best. That's your job. That's what you've got to do. That's what you have to do. And, but again, that's why you use the portal. Because you just picked up a five-star quarterback. So, there's a rated four star now because he can't play. Well, whatever. Hey, there's, what? a, there's a four star Maryland linebacker rated right, transfer in the portal right now. Go get the, just go get the four star linebacker from Maryland. Yeah, it doesn't in, in the portal. Just to say, you know, I, I, I've seen a lot of tweets go say, just put Maryland on the schedule. Put them on the schedule. I, 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 I didn't tweet it. Put Maryland on the schedule. Why not? I'm down. Why not? I'm down. Sure. Okay, guys, appreciate you all tuning in. Like I said, great interview after this with Kwan Lewis, from Gamecocks linebacker. Little throwback conversation, throwback interview uh, from back in the day. Really, really good stuff. We talked about his career. Kwan, of course, playing on some of the best defenses in Gamecocks football history. So, really, really great conversation. And those tuning in digitally, those tuning in the podcast, appreciate you tuning in again. A little bit of a crazy day. Decided to make this the podcast. So what you're hearing, this conversation can read, but will be tomorrow's podcast. So we can appreciate y'all being flexible with that. Like I said, it just made no sense to go back home and re-record everything. Like, everything. So it made no sense. Um, you know what I hate, man? College football news has not released their prediction yet for uh, the game. Better be hitting once, three, once, five, five. Except they're going to get sacked 12 times. You know, how cool would it be, though? 
if the Zeb Nolan story ended with a, with a win of the ball, and we just carry Zeb out on, on our shoulders. Who's Sam Howell? Zeb Nolan beats Sam Howell to lead the game Gamecocks to a 16-13 win. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Howell gets picked off four times. The Gamecocks run for 57 yards. And Jordan Burks had three sacks. It comes out of nowhere. Then declares for the NFL draft. Even though he's not a local. Hey, you know, I was really the thing. Right? Yeah, no, I was really not. Hey, fucking dang, you know, you go wherever you want. Spencer Rattler's in street gear on the sidelines. Hey, Spencer Rattler spotted on the sideline rocking a beaver ball hat. Hey, let's go. He follows the ground. He follows the ground. He does. For those who might have missed it, we can close on that. We're going to stay like two minutes. Spencer Rattler does indeed, not per sources, this is fact, follows the Spurs up show on Instagram. Shout out to QB1. Love to see that. Spencer Rattler follows the Spurs up show on Instagram. We love to see that. Truly, truly. We, we love you. We do. QB1. QB1. And those, yep, per sources. See, those were wrong. Spencer Rattler has not been to the Five Points Waffle House in many rumors. Well, hey, uh, the last thing we needed to do is hang out with you. No, my favorite reply today to that tweet was somebody, some anonymous account tweeted and said, yo, if you go to the Five Points Cookout, he's valid. I saw that. He's valid. I'm like, he is valid. You are right. You are right. No, I'm going to he ain't valid to come to Tampa. Next time you go in, ask about the kid who ate uh, five uh, all stars. Five all star specials. Sounds terrible, actually. Sounds terrible. I don't think I'd even eat two. Like, I'm good at one. I, I don't believe it. Person. Person. Everything is personal. Great time of year to have a guy against 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 UNC. Just give me somebody who's going to beat him. Just give me somebody who's going to beat him. So. Okay, in case you missed the Kyle Gordon signing his letter of intent, and then he is the latest. Yes, he is the latest of the Gamecocks signees. To make it official. So, with that being said, guys, again, right now, before we get off, the latest updates Gamecocks recruiting class, not per sources, just per the internet, sit 23rd nationally, which is crazy though, 23rd nationally, 11th in the SEC. At number one is Texas AM with Bama at two. Guess who's three? Georgia. Uh, and on rivals, the Gamecocks sit at 21st. I'm not sure what they are in the conference on rivals. Let's see. Some rankings here. Here we go. In the conference on rivals, Gamecocks sit at 10th. Okay. So, pretty simple. Either way, though, overall, nice job by Shane in the class. You got Spencer Rattle. You got Stoddard. I think you got some really nice pieces. Um, in the class as a whole, I think you got guys that will be good players for you. And again, it's 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 year one, man. You got a six and six. You got a top twenty-five class. It literally is year one. Hey, if we're in year five, year six, year seven, and you're pulling in the class of the eleventh best class in the SEC. Then I think maybe there's cause for concern. This is year one. So after the 79th ranked class last year, right. <laughs> This just – wait, breaking news, this just in. Gamecocks pick up commitment from zero-star bartender, J-Mo. J-Mo, welcome to the team. Five-star bartender, zero-star water. Five-star water boy, J-Mo. Obviously, you serve it every night. Right, exactly. That's a good place to close it. All right, hey, appreciate you all tuning in. Like I said, come on out to Tin Roof in the Vista, $3 draft, $3 rumble, $7 book. What? 11 Wow. Yeah, that's I thought it was 7 I got bamboozled, ran them up, led astray. It's still, it's still 
I don't know, whatever. Hey, why get the 10 for 14 wings when you can have five tendies? Five for 10 tendies. That's the question that truly needs an answer. That's the question that needs an answer. Again, folks, come on out to Tin Roof, though. Either way, great food, great people, great times. We're going to be out here, and I'll be tuned in to Shane's call-in show at 7. See what Coach has said. Again, guys, if you're tuned in digitally, thank you so much. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, also if you're tuned in the podcast. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Um, so until next time, y'all coming out to Tin Roof. Appreciate all those who came out, all the, hom- all the homies. And uh, remember, folks, whatever you do, tip your bartenders and don't tweet it. Don't tweet it. Don't tweet it. Don't tweet it. All right. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Those are the podcasts. Enjoy this conversation before we get Cox linebacker. Go on, Lewis. Right. All right, joining us today on the Spurs Up show is a man that played for Gamecocks football from 2012 to 2014 and then played for Rutgers in 2015. Over his career, he amassed 76 total tackles for the Gamecocks, four tackles for loss, two sacks, two interceptions, and a fumble recovery. He was also on some of the best teams in school history at South Carolina. I'm very pleased to be joined by former Gamecocks linebacker Kawan Lewis. Kawan, appreciate you taking the time, man. It's a pleasure to have you on. Uh, Thanks for having me. It's a blessing and a pleasure. Appreciate it. Absolutely. So, Kwan, let's go back to the beginning for you, because obviously you were a guy that was a very highly sought after recruit and a guy that you came in during the midst of the Gamecocks best ever run in football. And obviously, like I mentioned, you were a part of that. But just kind of talk about your recruiting process and uh, what eventually led you to decide to go to South Carolina. Uh, the recruiting process is pretty crazy for me. Uh, it was a great time in my life. I was able to travel the country and amass over 25 scholarship offers from some of the greatest places in the country. So um, for me, it just came down to what was best for myself and my family and a great opportunity at a great, a great university to play some great football in the SEC, which is why I picked the University of South Carolina. I, I was going to say, I, I know they really had it rolling at that point. How much did the, the opportunity, like you said, to play in the SEC and win an SEC championship, how much did that, that point come across to you? How much did that factor in your decision? Because again, you know, when you got on campus, South Carolina had guys on their defense like Jadavion Clowney, DJ Swearinger, uh, Stephon Gilmore, the list goes on and on. But I mean, how much did that factor in to know that you were going to be playing on a really, really, really high caliber defense? Oh, that was big because I knew that we would be able to compete at a high level with the likes of uh, the powers of the SEC and those other schools in the country. So it helped us a lot. I mean, we were on a roll the university was already on the roll and we got there. You know, we had some big wins against Georgia, uh, Clemson. Uh, they just came off the big win against Alabama the year before I got there. So mm. there was a lot of big things happening and um, great chance for, for you know, some NFL exposure. You know, we had a – it's like a hotbed in Columbia. I know, obviously, you play for Steve Spurrier. I know the relationship kind of differs for different players, especially when you're a defensive guy. I know he didn't really – he didn't really mess with you guys a whole lot, but what were your first interactions like with uh, with Steve Spurrier? Well, for me, it, it was um, it was pretty good. He was a funny guy. I mean, he used to really get on me a lot because <laughs> I kind of practice with one speed, and I, I like the I like collisions a lot, whether it be practice or in the scrimmages. And you know, he likes to protect his offensive guys. So I, I got I got thrown out of practice or scrimmages a few times, you know, due to high capacity collisions out there. So that was kind of my my big um my funny memories with Coach Asperger was uh you know just trying to protect his guys on the sure. offensive side of the ball. Yeah, I, I was about to say I, I've talked to other guys. I know he didn't like those defensive guys knocking around his uh, his offensive guys in practice. But I was just taking a look at your stats, Kwan. I mean, twenty twelve you played a little bit, but twenty thirteen I feel like it really really clicked for you. You know, you had the two interceptions, you had a fumble recovery against. Uh, all right, you had a forced fumble against Clemson that was obviously huge on the punt. You had a fumble recovery in the bowl game. I mean, just talk about what – I guess what clicked for you in the sense in your game. Was it just getting more opportunities or was there something about your game that you feel like got that much better going in that 2013 year? Well, well that offseason, I spent a lot of time with, you know, some of the older players and, and the likes of like um, Shaq Wilson. Well, him coming back was huge for me and um, just learning the defense and putting the time in to actually understand and make the checks and be out there playing fast and not not tentative. So it was big for me to just take the offseason and understand certain things that help me play faster. 
Uh, you know, it's funny. We always have this debate. We were actually uh, talking about this, I think, last week or a couple weeks ago about the uh, the team of the decade as far as – because, you know, the decade just wrapped up as far as Gamecock football is concerned. You were on both teams, so I'm curious to ask you, between the 2012 and the 2013 teams, if you had to pick, if they, if they played against each other head-to-head, uh, which one do you think would win in a game? Uh – I mean, it was um, – both teams are pretty exciting. I'm going to go with the 11-2 and two with the big win in the um, the bowl game. And we finished number four in the country that year. Mm-hmm. So, it had it been a playoff, we probably been, had been in the playoffs that year. You know, so – Good point. It was, a, it was a great year that year against Wisconsin we won. So Good point. No, that's a good point for sure. <laughs> uh, just talk about yourself. You know, everybody that comes on, I ask about the South Carolina-Clemson rivalry. Obviously, you were a part of beating Clemson five years in a row. Um, what did that rivalry mean to you? What does it mean to you now? And just for a guy that's been between the lines, I mean, what is it like playing in that rivalry? Oh, it was deep. I mean, for me, it was pretty deep rooted because growing up, that was always like my potential favorite team, my favorite team coming up as a kid. I loved Clemson. So when I got to the recruiting process, they were one of the few schools who didn't offer me a scholarship. So for me, it kind of like deflated all the love that I had for them and then getting down to Columbia it only emerged it even more to want to beat those guys as much as possible in upstate. What What was the first moment for you in the rivalry where you were like, this is like pure hatred? Like, it, like when, when did it click, I guess, like on the field? Because I know that it was already there, obviously. But, I mean, when when did it click on the field uh, for you, just, just how serious it was? Uh, pre-game, pre-game warm-ups on the field, I would say. We could just the, – the intensity of the rivalry just picks up at, at pre-game – that we don't like them, they don't like us, and it's kind of it's kind of noted. It's not like a friendly rivalry or anything like that. It's something that you really had to deal with for 365 days. For sure. So I want to talk about a game specifically, 2013, Kawan. You had a big play in it. That's the game at Missouri. Uh, the tip drill, you had the interception. Talk about just that game as a whole. Obviously, that play specifically as well, but I mean – one of the crazier South Carolina football games, I think, in recent memory when you guys were able to. Obviously, the Connor Shaw game, he's able to come in there and lead South Carolina back, but the defense had a really good day. But just talk about your play in that game in general. Uh, well, that week, it was a, a heavy study week. Like, and that's one of the games I talk about when I talk to kids and when I'm training kids a lot about film study because I was able to pick up a lot of key points and understand what teams do and tendencies prior to actually going in and playing the game. So it made the game a lot more easier. I mean, they have a lot of different things that you can tell what they're going to do before they actually do it. And then with the um, the tip drill play was kind of big because a lot of your turnovers and, you know, big plays come from just hustle. You know, you know they're not going to really just – nobody's going to really throw the ball right to you. you got to hustle and get there. If you look at a lot of the, the interceptions that Devontae Holloway made over the years when he was at the spur position, he um, were a lot of hustle, hustle plays. Look at the play against Georgia. That he made it's a lot of hustle just to get to the ball. For sure. So I, I do want to talk specifically about that Clemson game in 2013, Kawan, and the play that you had again on the punt. Um, I remember the play specifically. I, I was in the stadium and I was surprised that uh, I think it was Adam Humphreys was surprised he fielded yep. it in the first place, and he decides to field it, goes up, and you just kind of come out of come out of nowhere and just really just swat it away, and South Carolina recovers. I mean. A play, like you said, really a hustle play. Like when you look at it, that's truly a hustle play and, you know, being in the right spot at the right time. And I, I don't – I feel like players that make plays like that, it's not – people want to say, well, that was lucky or something like that. Like you, you don't get lucky. You put yourself in that, that position. But, I mean, yeah. that game specifically, I feel like, you know, during that run, it was like the Gamecocks could do no wrong. Like you, you never felt like South Carolina was going to lose that football game. It's like something's going to break our way and – that was one of the breaks that sort of happened where we fall on it, and obviously the rest is history. But, I mean, just just talk about that play. And then, again, that feeling, you know, closing out Connor Shaw's career. He's undefeated at home. Um, you guys able to win the fifth straight against Clemson. I mean, j- just just talk about that feeling, that rush of emotions that night. Well, that, that game was a, was a wild night. It was a crazy night, especially with that, that play right there, knowing that we got the, the possession back and I had a, a big play in that. I played a big hand in that. was – it's huge for me because you get the the respect of the state. You know, my name will be forever remember it. Mm-hmm. And that game right there and against Clemson, it's your biggest rival. And it, in that moment, though, it's just like I said, going back to what I was coached to do. And I'm just a, a at the time was just a, a hungry guy for the ball. So anytime that I was going up against an opposing 
player who had it. It was just to, to try to make a play on getting it out and getting it back into the hands of our quarterback and our running backs and receivers and you know those guys to make a play for us to get us an end zone. So that was a big play for me. I mean, arguably between that and the sack on Taj Boyd was – Mm-hmm. Two of the biggest things, you know, during that game, to momentum changers, energy shifters. For sure. I, I know you mentioned Shaq Wilson earlier, but who, who was the guy for you when you got to South Carolina? Was the guy like you sort of looked up to or maybe was like your mentor, if you will? Uh, Shaq Wilson. I would say Shaq Wilson was probably my mentor a lot. However, a guy that does this went about his business every day that I noticed, you know, all the time. I would say it was DJ Swearinger, the way that mm-hmm. he studies the film and – prepares himself for games. You know, I watched those guys. You know, that whole team right there was the older guys mm-hmm. were were really attention to detail. For sure. So I, I want to ask you, Kawan, to get your take. Going from 2013 to 2014, obviously, again, the lofty expectations uh, and well-deservedly so. I mean, you guys are a top-10 team. Did, did you see coming – because I, I, the defense struggled, obviously, in 2014. There were a lot of departures. And I talked to Sherrod Golightly about this, one of your former teammates, and – you know, he cited the lack of pass rush being a big deal in 2014, what he thought really hurt you guys. But, I mean, did 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 you see that coming as far as, like, the struggles on defense? I mean, were you in practice thinking we're really going to, you know, we're really going to miss these guys or we're deficient in these areas? Or was it kind of just – because I know Gamecock Nation, Gamecock fans just sort of assumed, like, hey, we're just going to keep it rolling, like, no big deal. Yeah, no, no we, we – cool Yeah. We all felt like we would keep it rolling. We didn't can't necessarily say that we seen it coming. However, guys had to deal with when, when me, Sherrod, and Sky Moore started begin, beginning to play, we were inexperienced guys. Mm-hmm. But we had a great D-line in front of us. So the three games, first three games where we were trying to, like, you know, learn and get to start playing faster, they worked with us. They helped us. It's harder for a linebacker to help the D-line in that sense. And, and that way, because we need the D-line to help us keep us free so that way we can make the plays. We had a lot of inexperienced players on the D-line who hadn't had that many snaps, that many reps to know what it's like with a lot more teams at that time going hurry up offense. You know, it was just the, – the, the was actually changing at the time. So, it was just a difference with that. And uh, it's a lot of young guys playing, I would say. For sure. I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump around here a little bit because you make a good point. I want to ask you, I know you're a guy that still follows along with the program and the linebacker yeah. position for South Carolina the last couple of seasons has been one that has been a mixed bag, I feel like, because there's been some scrutiny on that position. But you make a really, really good point in the sense that you really do need a good defensive line to help out those linebackers. And I think we've seen that at different times at South Carolina. What have you seen from the linebacking court at South Carolina over the last couple of seasons? Because, again, I feel like they've been one of the more highly scrutinized position units uh, on the Gamecocks defense. Well, I mean, you, I, me, from what I've seen over the years and just being able to watch it, these guys, I love the way that T.J. Brunson has played over the years. I think that if you get a core of guys that actually play for a while together, you know, bond together and able to play over a few years together, it helps a lot more than just, you know, always, you know, a couple of JUCO guys here, a couple of JUCO guys there. Everybody's in for a year and out the next year. It's kind of hard to gel that way. you got a lot of people trying to make plays, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. just for oh, themselves. Yeah. So it's a difference. When you get a core group of guys that have been there two, three, four years, if you gel together, you understand the, understand the system and the scheme, you play faster that way. And you make a lot more plays. Look at those guys at the University of Miami. I believe they played over 50 games together mm-hmm. at linebacker. And, and it shows at times, you know what I'm saying? So, so that so that experience at the linebacker position, like almost like offensive line, like that 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 really does matter just as much as the linebacker position as any other position, really. Yes, because you're in charge. Of, you're in charge of ev- everything. You know, gap gap responsibilities and getting the D line information and getting the the back end on the same page as you. So when you're kind of just thrown into the fire, I know what it's like. I know what it's like. You know, North Carolina came out. My first start, they come out running hurry up offense, and I'm trying to get everybody, everybody lined up. And it's my first start, mm-hmm. learning a new system, and these guys are going to hurry up offense, and it's 100 degrees in Columbia. <laughs> it can be tough. Yeah, it can I, be tough. I was at that one. That was one of the hotter days. I think we. That was one of the hotter days I think we've ever had, as far as a game day is concerned. But uh, now I was going to ask you. Obviously, you you were fortunate enough, Kwan. You played a lot of great moments at Williams Bryce Stadium. You were a part of. Man, yeah. I think 
off the top of my head. 2014 Georgia, uh, 2013 Clemson, uh, 2012 Georgia. I mean, if you had to pick one, the loudest you've ever heard williams Bryce Stadium, what would it be? Wow, out of those those moments right there. Or if you um, haven't, or if there's another one. I mean, that's just like some of the off the top I of my that, head. I think that for me, I had a. I, I would say, 2014 Georgia may have been crazy loud. However, I couldn't hear because I had an excruciating migraine. But mm. I wanted to play in the game, so I blocked everything out, and it, it was a fantastic atmosphere that day. But I'll probably say the loudest would have been. It has to be between 2012 Georgia and the 2013 Clemson game, where the I would lean more toward. I'm biased about beating Clemson, so I'm going to always <laughs> ride on that that day when we beat those guys from the Upstate. For sure. So you, you take a look at your career again. You know, three years at South Carolina, you transfer to Rutgers. Uh, had a really good year for Rutgers in 2015. Was the decision to transfer for you, for you, Kwan? I guess how difficult was the decision, if difficult at all? I mean, I'm sure it's something. That it looks like you probably wanted more opportunities. And I mean, again, you because I mean, you you had a great year in 2015 for Rutgers. But just talk about that decision to transfer. What went into that? How tough, it, if at all, was that decision? Oh, uh, well, that decision. I never really wanted to leave Columbia. I love that. I love the University of South Carolina to this day. I, anywhere I go, I'm liable to have something on. I, I have my bull watch on actually right now with the uh, Block C in it. So I'm kind of indebted forever to the university, and I never wanted to leave. However, I had some family situations over um, in 2013 and 14 in which I felt the need to be closer to my family. Mm-hmm. And we had a, 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 a horrific back-to-back year as a, as a family that I need to be closer to home. So I was happy to be able to be a graduate and also be able to be close to my family at that time. But, and I thank Rutgers for the opportunity. I definitely thank Rutgers University for the opportunity. Coach Coach Flood and Coach Frazier and all those guys up there it was a, a great experience. But I don't take anything away from being in Columbia and being a Gamecock forever and just doing what it takes to, to, to finish there. And, um, like I said, if, it, if if things would have been a bit different for my family at the time, maybe things would have shook out different for me to be able to stay in Columbia for that last that final year. But again, I'm glad I'm gladfully to say I graduated from the University of South Carolina. No doubt. So I, I do want to get your take on this though, because obviously, again, 2015. I mean, these you, you know that that entire team, basically your guys, your teammates, guys, your buddies with. You know, Steve Spurrier obviously resigns midway through the year. I mean, how surprised were you? Obviously, not being in Columbia, but you're – I mean, I'm sure you're keeping up with it. You're seeing what's going on. I mean, how surprising was it to you just how the 2015 season unfolded from the record being what it was to Steve Spurrier resigning? And, I mean, you know, people make the great point. This is less than two years after, like you mentioned, you guys go 11-2 and and finish fourth in the country. I mean, how, how shocking, I guess, was all of that to you? Uh, to me, honestly, I don't think that it was – that's shocking. I felt like we all had, as players, probably even during the successful years that we had at South Carolina, like like I'll say that I'm a South Carolina guy. I think deep down inside, Coach Sperrier will always be a Florida guy. Mm. He'll always be a Gator. And I felt like that he he, 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 he was done. You know what I'm saying? He, he was mentally, he was checked out. Um, the game began to pass. You know, the game began to pass some people by. You know, as as time goes on, the game has evolved into spread offenses and running gun, and you got six receivers on the field. You know, different things were changing at the time. Mm. And if you're not keeping up, you know, as a team and as a staff, we're not keeping up with certain things. You know, it's sometimes in the best interest to step away or take a different role. You know, everybody is uh shifting positions. But like I said, I believe that. Coach Sperrier is always going to be – I thank him for the opportunity to play at the University of South Carolina, but I think that he'll always be a, a, a Florida Gator at heart. And I felt yeah. like that was big for him. Yeah, and I think you see that now. I mean, he's obviously a, what an ambassador for the University of Florida. And, uh, yeah, you talk about the game passing him by. He's, he's mentioned this and admitted to it, but definitely the recruiting side of it, I think, is what everybody looks at. And it's just, you know, that <laughs> if you, you can't recruit in college football, you're not going to be very successful. But uh, obviously with him resigning, uh, Sean Elliott gets the interim job, and then Will Muschamp obviously gets the job. 
Um, has had a good first couple of years. I know this past season was obviously pretty rough. But just talk about, as someone who is an alum of the program, you've got a different connection than just even a normal fan. Um, what, when you look at this program, I guess, what's your overall take on the state of South Carolina football and going into, going into the future, into the 2020 season? Honestly, I think it's going in the right direction. I, I believe it's going in the right direction. I love what they're doing right now with the the recruiting that they're doing right now with the, the transfers that they're getting to come in there, um, the guys out of high school that they're getting to come in there. We got to be able to recruit those same players that the other SEC powers are recruiting. And um, I feel like he's doing that. I feel like he's got a great staff put together to, to do that. I feel like he's making the correct moves with – with various situations that I've been evaluating, that I've been evaluating over time. However, um, Will Muschamp is a, a phenomenal coach. Actually, when he was at the University of Florida, this was my second choice. I mean, my top three schools came down to Florida State, Florida, and South Carolina, and Florida being number two. So, I'm happy that Will Muschamp is with the Gamecocks, you know, and uh. Forever will be thankful to that guy because he offered me an uh, a offer to further my education as well as my athleticism. For sure. So you made you made a really good point. I'm curious to get your take on this, Kawan. You talked about you know there, South Carolina has done pretty well in the transfer market as far as uh, picking up grad transfers and stuff like that. As a guy that transferred, when when you look at sort of the way college football is now, because I don't think when you transferred it was quite as, like, wide open as it is now with guys just being able to kind of pick up and go, whatever. Yeah, and now it's like free agency. Right, right. And especially, too, like guys being able to play four games and still pick up their red shirt. Like that's not the transfer stuff, but things – college football has evolved. I mean, when you take a look at it, again, as someone that did have the opportunity to transfer, obviously for much different reasons, though, I mean, what's your thoughts on just the, the transfer portal, if you will? Oh, uh, I feel like – I feel like it, it, it can be good, but it can also be abused at times, mm. you know. Um, but when it works out, it works out. You look at a couple guys have transferred and, and won the Heisman and, you know, became Heisman finalists or became first-round draft picks. So I tip my hat to those guys. But at the end of the day, I just – I've seen some, certain, some guys transfer three times. Mm. At, at, at some point, the universities are not the problem. Sometimes maybe <laughs> you're the problem. Like – and and that's just that's my take on it. You know, that's my take on it. You gotta know yourself, know your your worth, and know what you're putting in. Like, what are you putting forward for yourself as to why you feel like these changes need to continuously be made, or if this is the right move for you. You know what I'm saying? You you just it's a family decision. It's also a decision that you have to make personally. But. That's my my take on it. You know, what I mean, if it's a, if it's a one time thing, you put yourself in a better position. I never would have fought a, a player or a school, but I've got those guys that are transferring three times. I think that's a a bit excessive. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's crazy. You know, I was taking a look at the college football playoff this year. For example, three of the four quarterbacks, <clears throat> three of the four quarterbacks in the playoff were guys that have transferred, which which I think is just. It's it's kind of crazy when you think about it. Like that's that's kind of the reality. Like if you need a quarterback, just basically hit the free agent pool, like you were saying. Um, all right, so go on. Let's switch gears a little bit. Just talk about what you're doing currently now. I know you talked about at the beginning of the show training athletes. I mean, what, what what's the life of Kawan Lewis right uh, like uh, right now? Uh, life of Kawan Lewis right now. Um, face some adversity over time. You know, just um, moving forward with my life right now, currently, and just trying to make better decisions and continue to share my story and my life with the athletes of today and the students of today and um, help others, the young guys, get to colleges now and um, training athletes and just trying to help everybody, you know, further themselves and learn from one another and continue to help everybody be successful. No question. So, Kawan, I'm going to get you out of here, but last question before I let you go, and I feel like I know where you're going to go with this just because some of your comments from previously, but – if you had to pick one moment that was your your favorite memory in Garnet and Black, what would it be? I would say the sack on Todd Boy. I think that would be I think that would be a, a big moment for myself personally. Um, and just going eleven and two. I mean that that year was a historical year, finishing number four in the country. People might not understand how hard that is to do. 
Yeah. H- highest finish in school history ever. So I, I uh, you know, I, it's the amount of good memories you guys provided Gamecock fans is you, you can't even put it in a word, but go on. Really do appreciate you taking the time. And man, like I said, again, it was a pleasure watching you in Garnet and Black, the way you played the game. And again, all the great memories. There's so many moments we could spend hours talking about, but uh, really do appreciate you taking the time, man. Let's do it again soon. Thank you. I appreciate it. Go Gamecocks.